yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up, my brothers? How you feeling this week? You know what it is. What's up, fellas? We want to come back to let's chop it up. Definitely. Let's do that with that. How they season. So how was, your, how was your week, brothers? How was your week, man? Kelvin, how was yours, man? My week was rough. My week was rough. What happened, and, man? Um, I have no water in my house. So it's not a bill thing. It's just a construction thing. And I had to stay at a hotel. And I, I vowed this is the last ghetto hotel I'm staying at in my life. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I'm just like, like I'm not going to say the chain. It's just one of those ghetto hotels, motels, or whatever it is. And all right, I, I get that it's COVID. So they like, we're not going to send a chambermaid to like change the sheets and things, you know, less stuff like that. I guess that's what it is. But the fact that the doors don't work, I got to pull them apart to get out get into the hotel. <laughs> then we had we had snow. So the lady was like, um, uh, you got to park in there at your own risk because we wasn't able to shovel out the, the driveway in the parking lot. I'm like, <laughs> if there's any other th- Where you staying at the base motel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm over on Queens Boulevard. And it's a bad look. It's a bad look. I vow. Oh, I you have this. you have one of those prize joints. Word up. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He might Next be at the, the strip club. He might be at the Bristol. Yeah, the Bristol. <laughs> yo, so it's a bad Because you said a chambermaid. You was waiting on the chambermaid? Yeah, that's my thought. That's my thought. <laughs> yeah, how like, do you have it? They're like, nah, she off right now. She's been furloughed. Chambermaid. <laughs> but other, other than that, y'all, I'm, I'm good. It's good to see the crew. Good to see everybody back together. A lot going on. What's up with you, fellas? Man. Yo, man, I'm Derek. good. Man. I'm good, man. You know what? I'm just, I'm just good. I'm just, I'm waiting. I'm just trying to wear the rest of this year out, bro. I just want to hurry up and just see what's what's on the other side of things, oh, man. man. But um, you know, it's been a tough one because um, you know, a lot of people, you know, you're finding out a lot about your friendships. You find out a lot about people who are around you. You know, everybody's on social media now. Even the ones, even me. You know what I mean? And um. You know, and, and and people are sharing a little, maybe a little too much. You find out a lot about people's, you know, political leanings and you know other things of that nature. So it's kind of like, man, you know, I got, you know, so some of it is disappointing. But I try not to get too much into it. But I'm thinking about it because I'm just, I'm just like, I'm, I just want to hurt get to the other end of it. Uh, on a positive note, though, uh, I did see, I did, uh, my son graduated basic training this week. Congratulations. Bro, man, I mean, this, you know, that's, I feel like that's the end of an odyssey and uh, the beginning of one era and the beginning of his, um, of his, of his new, of his new, you know, um, <clears throat> his new stage as far as manhood. So I'm really happy for that. And I also want to shout out, um, I got really happy today because I got on, uh, I got on the, the New York Black Latino meetup earlier yeah, on yeah, today. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to shout them out. It's beautiful people, positive. Everybody's there. It's just beautiful people. We, we hang out, we network. Uh, we travel together and um and, and and we just chill and it was really nice to see everybody there. You know what I mean? That people I hadn't spoken to in a while. So um I'll, I'll, maybe on the other end of this COVID we can get back together again. And, and, nice. You know, Brother Rod, how was there a week? Uh, my week was it started off good. Um started off a diet and I'm started working out, me and my wife. So we're gonna be committed to it, trying to get ahead of the New Year's resolution. But uh we had a bad day today. Um, me and my wife went out a little, did a little shopping and we lost my debit card. Went from one store. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this is the funny thing. We went from one store to another. And I mean, less than an hour when I went into the second store, that's when I realized the card was gone. So I decided to go into my bank account and guess what? Somebody had, they hit me already. So whoever found the card hit me within a less than an hour. Wow. Four thousand dollars. Dang. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah, actually, I didn't lose the card. My 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 wife lost the card. You know, she's wow. she's no. T- I'm not. I'm, I don't know what it is with with debit cards with her, but she loses at least five debit cards a year. You know. Wow. One, t- <laughs> one time we was in the um in Manhattan, and we stopped at a light, and you know, um, homeless guy comes up to the car. And she had some change in the car, in her car, in her cup. So she decided to uh, give the change with the cup to the homeless guy, and her debit card was in the cup and gave the card. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yo, yo, that's, oh my! 
It was like the yeah. Eddie Murphy movie. It was like the Eddie Murphy movie where they gave him the money and they called watermelon. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, so in the famous in the famous words of Kelvin, the natives got me today. <laughs> <laughs> The, Yo, the so let me ask you a question. It's a little different with the um the debit card versus the credit card. Yeah, so that's how, right. do, how do they how do they cover it? There's a certain nah, percentage it's all, the time. No, nah, it's all. So the thing is, like I, I went right into my account and somebody had had uh, charged a thousand dollars to a Venmo account. So like oh, I said, okay. the, the yeah. card wasn't even lost for an hour, and they already set up a Venmo account and took a thousand dollars out. But I mean, it's all covered. They, they they put the money back into my account. I mean, it's not worried about it. They issued me a new card. So, wow. but the thing is, we just go to show you how fast these scammers work. Yo, you know, the kid, yo, the kids will say their pieces are hitting. Yo, yeah, their pieces are hitting. <laughs> their pieces are hitting now. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, I yeah, start yeah. hear that, man. But I'm glad you. Nah, I'm you know, right. Yeah, at least you ain't get, you ain't get no bull, bull crap. Uh, bank, uh, bank uh, company. So you got your money. Nah, back. nah, nah. I call. They took care of it right away. You know, so everything's all good. So now we up to six a year that my. Uh, six cards a year that my wife loses. Go for the record, you know? go for the record. Right, now she's right. pretty much in 2020. She broke a record. Now. I feel that. Don't be average. Don't be average. You know what that. it is? I guess she got tired of losing her card, so she said, "You know what? I'm gonna lose his card now." <laughs> yeah, but other than that, everything's good. I'm still blessed, and I'm you know happy to be here. Happy to see you, fellas. That's what's good, up. Good, yeah, good, good, good. My, my my week was okay. It was it was cool. It was just like uh, I feel for the parents of the online learning man. You know, my some of the special needs with him. Having hit his zooms at the same time is kind of difficult because mm -hmm. he think every time I open up with his learning device, his well, my not, son has to speak with a, a iPad. So anytime we open up a learning uh, uh, tablet, anything like that, he thinks it's his zoom. So he's just jumping in there, putting his face in the camera, all kind of stuff. And people think it's cute, but they, I'm dying over here because he's over uh -huh. there. You know, you got to think about it. he might take his damn pants off and just be running around this joint. So it's like <laughs> difficult. So I, I commend all the parents in 2020 that did the online learning with special needs kids, uh, uh, high functioning children. Two or three kids, I I, I salute y'all. This is no, this was no joke. Hard work yeah. this year, man. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. I'm like Derek. Yeah. We're ready to turn the page from that and and yeah. you know go forward. Now I will say this: be be careful because we said the same thing in 2019. You know, people the last couple of years, he was like, "Yeah, I can't wait. 2019 is over. 2020 <laughs> is my year. 2020 yeah. has well, well, I ain't saying yeah. shit." I mean, yeah. I think you yeah. might. I think you might just be right, man. I think we yeah. might just get ready and just see whatever comes on the other side. We're gonna do that regardless, man. Random question. I always ask you a random question, and this time of year, it'd be apropos, even at this age. So, when you was a kid, most exciting gift you ever received as a kid? Mm. When I was a little kid, when you when you when you anticipated that one thing that you used to watch the commercials for everything. Apollo Five Speed Bike. Apollo mm. 5 speed bike. Apollo 5 speed bike. Remember that. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's hot. Yeah, remember that. And you ready for this? I think I think maybe three months after getting it, somebody stole it. The natives. Yeah. I don't even know where you that. It was the natives. <laughs> it, was the pre, it was the pre-native era. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The natives were just getting bike. started. Wow. With that oh, little shift, heard. with the shift in the middle. Remember the shift oh, in the middle? Right yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yo, my, best gift, age. my best gift was this shirt. <laughs> yeah, that's a real good shirt. That's, that's, a, fly shirt. that's a fly shirt. That's a fly shirt. All right, so I, you, I know what these was. Your favorite gift was like a, a black power fist or something as a kid. It might have been. It might have nah, been. Come on, D, give it to us. What was it? Nah, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite gift, and my man Brad, I don't even know if he's on there, I think, was a racing track. Car racing track, though. I used to, I used to have one that used to jump over the three barrels. It was all, all right. Was First of all, was, I'm with you on that. My, the, the problem was none of that joint worked when you got it home. Like they, they can't, my, my, <laughs> no. the thing I wanted was a racetrack called the Super Duper Double Looper. And I mean, <laughs> the joint would glow in the dark and they turn off the lights and they do a slow motion. On, you get that joint home, we go around the track, get to the curve and stop or fly off. But yo, that no. was what I wanted. All right, Derek, what is it? What's the deal? I don't know. I think I'm caught between two. Probably that uh, Stretch Armstrong. Oh, and, uh, yeah. remember that? And, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Between that and another one, it was called a System 7 gun. It was like with the big plastic gun. It had the little shooting, had the little propeller <laughs> things that flying off. It had the little grenades on. It was something just something nice, man. Google it sometimes. So how did your parents do it? Was it one of those things where what my parents used to do was regular wrapped gifts was there all December. Right. But the night 
Christmas Eve, when you wake up on Christmas morning, the bikes or whatever would be assembled and it would be there and it would appear. Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. kind of like this magical feeling yeah. or whatever. How, how yeah. was yours done? I would say it was yeah. definitely the same way. What we would do, yeah. with, I, although one night, one, one, what they would do is we would go to sleep and all the gifts would be there. And then yeah. what would happen is my brother and I, man, we would just wake up in the middle of the night, man. And we got up when every time we got up, as long as it was after 12, they'd be like, I have at it. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So sometimes we, <laughs> when I was little, I used to try to wake up and catch Santa Claus. When I was little, I'd be like, I did. I tried it too. <laughs> they never find it. They never find it. To my father, to, to my father said, Yeah. I said, Pop, what happened to the catalog? He said, he said, Yo, he borrowed my Cadillac. You know what I mean? <laughs> my father <laughs> drove the Cadillac. So that was his way of saying, Yeah, I'm Santa Claus. You know what I mean? Uh, but, um, <laughs> but, um, you know. Hey, De hey Derek, I'm going to go back to something you said earlier, a little while ago. We had the meetup group, uh, the people that hang out and everything. We did exchanging gifts, the secret yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And the conversation came up. Uh, and, and I pose this conversation to you about pedicures. I'm a person that gets <laughs> pedicures. I got big feet. I like my joints to be cleaned up. I got a little black toe. I like to make sure I keep it down, keep it like kind of light brown instead of black. <laughs> so, you know, you know I want to make sure, like, I know you and, and Chris are against pedicures. Me and my man Rod, <laughs> as the as the, as the uh, homophobic, so no homo. <laughs> yeah. Right? Let's say pause for now. Or you're gonna pause, say whatever. Yeah, we pause. go. We we have gone together to get pedicures. Pause. Yeah, yeah, that's a true story. That's true. That's true. You know what I'm saying? And, you know right. what? What? What do you have against getting those done, brother? I don't have anything against them. I'm just not that fancy. That's all I'm saying. Like, do I deserve a pedicure? I don't know, brother. It's I not. Mean, it's I, not fancy. It's hygiene. Kelvin, do you get a <laughs> very good hygiene? I wash my feet. I wash my ass. I wash all that, man. I just don't know. I need. You know, pedicure, that's all, you know. Okay, okay, y'all don't take right. away past the pedicure. My man Derek giving his credentials. All right, check it out. Um, <laughs> Yo, you can't, you, know, you, can't, you can't walk around with your feet looking like Sasquatch. I'm with him. I'm with him. Now, I don't do them as regular, but I'm I'm with him, though. You know what I'm saying? Because if you put your socks on and it's start a fire or something, then you know. You, you know. So, Yo, so. It's feet, man. It's just no. feet. It's feet. One no, it feels good though. It feels good to me. I like the the the, the treatment, the pampering. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 right, yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. That and a massage. You gotta try it, Derek. You gotta try it. You gotta. Try Christopher it. said he goes to the beach wearing sneakers. Like, what's that? <laughs> How do you get out the water and jump in sneakers? Who does that? No, no, who does that? Yeah. I, think my is all, I got this for y'all. This we gonna do. Yeah, because you don't get pedicures. His feet look crazy. There you go. So IG is washing the feet. Do you wash your no. feet? Do you wash your hands? No, 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 no. It's more than that. It's more than that. It's more than that. We gonna get you one to do on the show. Somebody, if you got a black business and you, and even though I heard a lot of people said that that a lot of the black um, manicures don't want to do feet. That's what somebody told me. I don't know if that's real or not. Oh, really? But yeah, this li this lady was saying she got a black owned business and she she does nails and stuff. She's like it's hard to hire somebody. She's like a lot of black people don't want to do feet. And I don't know. I'm just saying that's what she said. But yo, that's, but that's real this, talk. Let's do real. this and have Derek do it on the show. His first ever. I, yo, I'm, I don't I'm know if I want to see that. I'm, Derek, Derek, I'm treating. I'm treating. I don't oh, know if I, I want to see that. No, no, no. no, no, no. Time, you you know, gotta turn away from it. The, the, the viewer discretion is advised. I just yeah I, yeah yeah. We can, you don't know, you know, you know, you know what you're getting into. You, yeah. know, you start looking down there, brother. You know I don't, I can't I, listen. I've never got a pedicure before. Yo, we, how that. they look is how they look. You know what I mean? Yo, Derek can take off his shoes and everything go black. We we don't want to take that chance. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to take that chance. Yo, the guy just said he never had a pedicure. Can you imagine? Ever. What I don't know. Like? How, I don't know what that's gonna look like. But Derek, come on, bro. You got to do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo. Look, I'll do anything. I'll try to first like time. each other. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Try, like you gotta, you know, you gotta get them back in line. All right. Well, you know, I'll try anything the first time. Yo, Scott said he, Scott said he don't want to see it on the show either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, we did no, I'm serious. Scott and Devin. Devin, what you no, asking? I'm, I'm, and Scott, Scott's like a brother to me. I'm treating Scott and Derek. Scott. And chicken wing at the same time. Oh, no, no, no. Yo, listen. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> Yo, if no. chicken wing do it, I'll do it. Yeah. No. No. Chicken, wing, chicken wing got crow feet, but he has done it. Oh, he has done it. He has done it. Chicken wing, oh, yeah? I, I, when he came home from prison, he, he, I mean, yo, he got his feet done. Right. Wow. I told him he can't get his feet done in jail. That, that can't get your braids nah. done. Can't braids done and can't get your feet done in jail. <laughs> you well, your braids done. All, you, you sit between somebody's lap. That's there's no there's no girls there's no girls in jail braiding hair. So if you get your hair braided in jail, you sit in between a man's lap getting your hair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
So when guys come home that. from jail and their hair is braided, you, go, mm. you know, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, getting yeah. hair braided by a man. Yeah. Well, you know what? I wonder if it's complete silence going on at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really know what you're feeling you talk like. About. Really uncomfortable, right. you, yeah, you know. And if, so you're sitting there talking about this didn't happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this really didn't happen. Know. Me and Rob went. It was so funny when we were we um, someplace getting a pedicure, and this lady was walking by, and me and Rob. Hillside yeah. Avenue, that's right. We yeah. hillside and, and towards the white side, towards the white side. Yeah, and white <laughs> we, 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 Like so, the the lady saw us in there, two big dudes, and this was shoot. We was both working out this time. Yeah. And the lady came in and ran like, "Oh, can you guys stay right here? I'll be right back." Like, what's this white lady gonna do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she came back with I her. Husband. She was going to get the police. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, did we rob them? Like, so yeah. She she came in with her husband. Like, tell them how cool it is. Yeah, she was yeah, begging yeah. us to tell him about the uh, pedicure. She was Isn't like, look just- at these. She said, look at these two guys. They're masculine. You don't have to be feminine to get your feet done. She said, they look like football players and they're getting their feet done. All right, so let's take it here. Let's take it here. What if, if they have nobody available but a dude in there to do it? No. Nah. I'm not getting not, and I'm not doing it. <laughs> This is where I stop it. I don't even get massages from dudes. You no, let me explain something. To you. I, 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 when I played sports, I hated when like I had uh, uh injuries and stuff. That was the worst part. The dude got to stretch you out. I don't, I don't like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like uh. I, I've been like I said, I've, I've been in the gym and, and and stuff like that, and I've been stretched. By a guy, but I've never been. I never got a massage by a guy. I never got no pedicure by no guy. I never will. But um, you know, lifting your leg up and crossing it over, I'm I, I'm all right with that. A guy could do that, you know. But you know, because most of the trainers and stuff in the gym was men. You know what I'm saying? But nah, I'm not gonna let no do massage. Yo, man. listen, Nikki got a good question. I'm gonna lie, Nikki. When I get my feet, I think it's my right foot. When I get that foot, that foot scrub, it's ticklish. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, there's Man. one spot on my foot too that is, if they hit that foot, take, foot I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, it's gonna pick a tickle. It's a lot of information being shared right now. Hey, hey yeah, Derek, yeah. all right, yeah. share, yeah. share. Yeah. Right. Hey, another thing, I'm gonna ask you another thing. Since we're on some metro sexual shit right now, yeah, yeah, manscaping, huh? <laughs> manscaping. Do you guys manscape? Let me start by saying I'm uncomfortable. You don't know what it is. You don't even know what it is. Derek, you know what it is? Derek's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> you, you, any, don't man, any, you don't manscape? Any brothers in the audience that manscape? I'm one of them. Okay, let me say this. Let me say this. I got <laughs> Listen, because our ratings are so high, we <laughs> right now are going to have Derek and Casper that walk by get a pedicure at the same time. <laughs> right. And you know, Scott. Going, uh, the Underground Railroad Special. <laughs> Yo, Scott, what is manscaping? <laughs> Scott is riding tonight, man. Nah, nah, oh, nah, the thing is, I want to see, I want to see, I want to see if he knows what it is. I trimmed my beard, <laughs> that's it. Oh, yo. Kid. He has a big beard, man. He has a big beard. Okay. He's listen, saying listen. that's all he trims. <laughs> he don't manscape. So the thing wow. is, all right, be honest with you. All right, so I'm I'm with it. It's just it it, it wasn't always that way. It started later. It's probably like a, a late '90s, yeah, early 2000s thing for me. Before I thought you had to go, you know, natural from the old school, from the motherland. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, hey, the black, uh, black porno did it. It's, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. it's, ne- <laughs> it's necessary. It's, it's, it's necessary. But look, yeah, look, 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 look at the women. Look at, look, 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 look at the women. Look, 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 the women. The ladies is like, cut it down. Cut it That's down. Right. Cut it down. It, right. You don't. Want, want, right, right, right. Do you want to see a woman that doesn't make, that doesn't woman skate? Now no, that's, that's the debate. Attitude. No, that's stop, the debate. It, stop okay, it. Stop so, it. No, okay. No, 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 no. Right now. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That is the debate. That is the debate. Now I want to. I've always been curious about this when we were kids so back in the day the magazines playboy and stuff like that women was you know i think early in the 70s it was you know a forest yeah, yeah. after that it was came some type of landed strip very nigga. now it's like a no like women completely shave and um it's so different than you know people were used to so and, and women that i speak to say they'll never go back to those days so what do you think? Nah, I think no, I took the conversation no, left. First of all, no, I didn't, yeah, I didn't no, we all over here now. Man. Yeah, no, I don't. I think, I don't think. Go ahead, go ahead, No, nah, go ahead, go ahead, D. You can go. I don't go think ahead. women are gonna go back to it because I think also besides just being like the cleanliness, cleanliness of it, they like it. I think it just makes them like it's a day. It's like a day they have. It's like um, therapeutic. They get that done. They get the Brazilian done. 
uh, they might like McCole says they might get a uh, uh, land landing strip, you know. And uh, and the women for guys getting it done, you know, women don't want all that hair. You know, when you get a little fellatio, you don't want all yeah. that hair. When you, when you get the little congalingus going on, you don't want all that in your teeth. I'm not coming there to floss my teeth. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the thing is, the, the thing is, too, you just dropped out. Yeah. Dude. You know that <laughs> with all that Let's hair. Let's that now, man. I had nothing. Listen, I was chill. I was cool. <laughs> With all that hair and you perspire in the summer, it's not yeah. pretty. Yeah. Pour it up. So the bottom line is... Hold it, on, it, hold it, on, hold on. Now, y'all trying to disrespect the whole generation of women that came before. Now, come no, on. I'm talking, about, men, I'm, I'm, talking, talking, I'm talking about the men. They go, men, they yo. They smell like hot oh, dog yeah. water down there. Correct. Oh, correct. <laughs> correct. Correct. <laughs> correct. <laughs> correct. Correct. Felt like a freaking fish tank, too. But oh, oh. not... I, hey, hey, Dan, I got some... So I just no, don't tell that. Don't tell that. Yo, listen. I got the yeah. Apollo Creed seven. I can't get rid of this. This Zula Cardova comes right back, man. It's hard. Yeah. Wow. He got the he got the permanent he got permanent taco meat. Taco wow. meat for real, man. Yeah. Listen, I got my Africans DNA. I'm 91% African, brother. So I, it's all. <laughs> but my hair on my back is straight. I'm like, I'm like I'm, it's bugged out. I just it's bugged a lot of information bro. flying around tonight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now we keep it real on this show. We keep it real. No, Danny, yeah. you can't say that generation was musty. That's <laughs> they're not, they were musty. <laughs> Think about the clones. Look at the old generation. Look at the clones. Look at the clones back there. We had London Fog. That's just like trash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe Van, <laughs> Joe Van yeah, Musk, the Old Spice. Yeah. Oh my, yeah, all that shit that's hot. That shit, that Aqua Velvet. That shit was horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue, horrible. Blue. It was musty. Oh, it was musty back in the day. Word up. It must be body. Well, that that's something strong. All right, so to be clear with the women, y'all just not going back to the hair at all. Like, that's it. It's a wrap. They shouldn't. And they shouldn't. One of my friends, she always tell me that. Really, I look at you different now, Rodney. All right, so right. that's how it is. We, we <laughs> I just think men, the same way women and men wear their hair differently. Maybe you know, just, you know, on their head, you know, maybe it should be a little different. But don't like the dudes with their beard. Just shadow it, right? Nothing. <laughs> what? Oh. What you mean my beard? <laughs> I'm just no, not no, the beard. No, I was no, using no. a metaphor. No, no what no, I'm no, saying no. is at the at the end of the day, I just it's amazing how things change. But when we were kids. And you look in those magazines, that's what you <laughs> saw, and that represented an adult woman. Oh, yeah, then, yeah, 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 yeah. That was back then, yeah, yeah. like you said, yeah. that was like in the was 70s and the 80s. Yeah, now, you, know, you don't see that no more. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't I, see that no more. That got, you know, when you know better, you do better. So, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, <laughs> oh, so, guys, so, so, guys, we, um, we just, we talk, you know, we talk about 2020. So, I want to bring up, like, what the top 10 thing topics of 2020, y'all? Uh, the top 10. When you say top ten, you mean good or bad or top 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 ten moments of twenty twenty and affecting the black people. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna clarify that. Thank you, producer Jamie. So the top to me, the number one thing this year. I mean, when we go, we, we talked about this for all of us. I think um, was COVID nineteen. Yeah. yeah, it affected yeah. our community in several kind of ways. We lost a lot of loved ones that we all cared about. It just showed us the discrepancy in healthcare. Um, you know, in the have and have nots. It just it it was really dramatic and, and jobs and then it showed how essential workers were mostly us and how it affected us and uh you know in the top so COVID 19 has got to be number one okay. yeah yeah no no question man it changed so many things and just COVID 19 came in man and just rearranged society bro like how and all the things that it touched you know from you know how we yep. work and how we think of ourselves and how we relate to people and how we relate to government and the news and it just changed everything man you know what i mean yeah you know, just, well, just so many things. But before um, that, Kobe, Kobe, early on in the year, um, I believe it's like what January twenty sixth or something like that. Kobe, you know, that was big, uh, not only for the black community, just the globe. You know, everybody see this this iconic basketball player, um, so young. Yeah, Kobe. You know, that that kind of set the tone in twenty twenty to see like, you know. Well, let. I hate to cut you off, Kelvin. Let's let's you know what for 2020. Let's start off with the least worst and end with the worst. How about yeah, we do that? yeah, we do that. Yeah, so, let's go, right, let's go least back. worst. The least worst had to be. I think everybody that's watching can agree was the no, Red Black Bull machine theft. I mean, I think that's, <laughs> that's one of the things. It's just uh, that, maybe that's an honorable yeah. mention. But yeah. uh, I'm going to say the, the, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Robbie. No, I think the least worst thing was probably that um, McDonald's brought back the Mac rib. 
That's the reason. <laughs> and then it probably started from then. We can start from this is is black conservatives. That's what uh, I, I think. Yo, oh, yeah. there is black conservatives. Was, oh my god, the coon. Yeah. The, the year the coon came out. Oh, the raccoon. Coon. I'm sorry, I don't want to call black the coon. The raccoon. Yeah, yeah. The raccoon, raccoon was big Listen. today. It was the money. Raccoon. There was money. There was money in raccooning in 2020. Oh, and, yeah. you know, a lot yeah. of raccoons took advantage of it. You know what I'm saying? They 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 said certain things so they could join certain administrations, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they can build following, so they can start to generate a white following, you know what I'm saying? So there was money to be made for raccooning in, in 2020. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna tell you though, I don't want to disrespect anybody who thinks of themselves as a conservative. I would in the beginning of the year, I was definitely like, What I always say, what the hell are you conserving? You're a black man, what are you conserving? But I yeah. realized. I don't want to disrespect anybody who's conservative because I've had conversations and I realize we all have some conservative things, you know, things that we're conservative about, you know what I'm saying? Certain ideas, you know, that align with what they call traditional uh, value. But um, what we're talking about with the raccooning, man, that's that's something different. But what, this was the year of greed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's something but, different. Yeah. That's what motivated the raccooning was, like yeah. I said, money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they, they saw opportunity to make money, like I said, to get into the White House, like yeah. I said, to go off on social media. Because the thing is, when, you, when you're when raccooning, you want to try to build a, a white base to follow you so they can say, hey, look, they're saying this about black people too. You know what I mean? And it, and it, and it, gives, it gives white people validation when they hear people, when they hear black people cooning like that. Yeah, yeah. No doubt. The, next, the next thing I think was, like I said, mentioned earlier, was the online learning. Well, everyone has children in here. I know, like my man Scott has kids. Ronnie, you have a lot of kids. Derek, you have yeah, children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and I have a, and I have a son and stuff like that. That that got to be one of the new things, and it might change the way education is. I sat on a lot of forums over this last year talking about education discrepancies with online learning and all that, like getting tablets to young people and getting Wi Fi. Because a lot of my students that deal with live in shelters, and shelters a lot of shelters are built with Cineblock, which don't have Wi Fi. Can't get Wi-Fi service. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That gotta be like the the next one on the list, and then I think it's gonna change up because my son is not going back to school. I don't know about right. your guys, your kids. No, stuff like that. Well, so my, kid, my kid is not going back. You know what I'm well, saying? I'm I, I noticed I noticed that they basically told us um, when the kids went um went off on the weekend this this week, they said that they were going to go on virtual learning Monday and Tuesday because you know my kids my kids go like two days a week and then they're home the rest of the week on virtual learning. So now I'm thinking they may be shutting the schools down where I live now after this after this weekend. So, yeah. you know, yeah. and then another thing too, they had this big thing where they were giving out laptops to everybody too from the schools. Right. So it may, kind of makes me think that they're preparing for another school closing. Oh yeah. But, uh, the virtual yeah. the virtual learning it, it, it is tricky because the kids, you know, they're not interacting with other kids. Then you know they're they're distracted in their rooms. They get to play you know games in their rooms and stuff while they're virtually learning. You know you see you see um you hear all types of crazy stuff in the background. The kids' houses oh. and stuff. Yeah. You know oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. 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 It's crazy because like yeah because a lot of people like I know some schools are trying to get on people for having to, telling the kids to have the cameras on, but they didn't realize like some of the kids are leaving living in shelters with one room and it's like three kids and and the father Correct. mother everybody's in. So they, that Correct. that was wrong. That was people then sent. Yeah. The people were not being sent to, to young uh, young people that uh, that don't have the means. Uh, yeah. Means. Correct. Correct. So, no, correct. 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 So, you know. it's number, tough. It's very tough. Yeah. Number number nine is working virtually from home. Now everybody can chime in on this. I I love it and I don't love it because my ass mm -hmm. like right now I'm in pajama pants. I must wear these pajama pants five days a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my my wife made some type of business phone call one day. Right. And she said this this working at home thing is crazy because she she heard the toilet flush in the background. She heard um, the person yelling at the kids, you know. So yeah, it, it, it's crazy. It's crazy yeah, working from home. But, but it's you still, go ahead, go no, ahead. D. No, no, I think what I'm saying was the business wise, it's going to change commercial real estate. Crazy. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> A lot of businesses are not going to go back to brick and mortar places because they right. realize that they can pay you to work from home now, and they right. still yeah. can get the same, you know, productivity from you. So a lot of a lot of places like storefronts and stuff and buildings and stuff, office space, all that stuff is going to it's going to get hurt. It's going to get hurt real bad. Yeah. I think they, they're just they're reset the market, market though. You say again, Calvin? I think it'll reset the market. In other words, those buildings are not being torn down. That that somebody's gonna come and rent that. They're just gonna reset the market. Somebody. Yeah, you know, they'll create they'll create other things for it. 
Yeah, but the right. thing is that it'll probably take a while before something catch on. So I still think commercial property is going to be hurting for a little while. Yeah. And oh, the definitely. restaurant, the restaurant yeah. business is definitely going to be hurting for a little and, while. Yeah, and yeah, that's the one. You really got yeah, to think restaurant bit and rent. People yeah. like now, look how many deals. Like one of my students called me the other day. She lives, I forgot what part of Brooklyn, my old student, and she got the first two months rent or three months rent free, and they gave her free parking for a year. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, that, that's now that's different in New York, and then like the prices have dropped. Brian, you know the percent? I think thirty, what thirty percent, something like that. The, the yeah, I think like the that. thing for the summer, like Manhattan, is definitely hurting when it comes to yeah. renting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because people are trying to get out of Manhattan because when they had to shut down, everybody was cramped into their apartment. Now everybody's moving out to the suburbs, buying houses. That's why the house market in Queens and Nassau and Suffolk is booming right now because mm -hmm. everybody's trying to buy a house. Yeah, you, you know, know what I mean? Sell your house. People, now's the time, man. If oh. yeah, if you're if you're looking to sell your house now. It's good if you're leaving if you're leaving the state, yeah. Because then you're gonna go and you but you'll sell high and then you'll go buy low. Right. But if you're gonna stay in New York, you're gonna yeah. be selling high to go buy high. People yeah. are paying like twenty thousand dollars over asking right now. Yeah. It's it's just amazing. It's amazing. But yeah, people don't want to be cramped in apartments now because they have a shut in. They want to chill in their backyards. They want to relax. They want to have a change of scenery. They don't they don't want to be cooped up in a building anymore. Yeah, right. and definitely. That, yep, and I think the number eight is the year. Of the Karens. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh Karen. Karen was big. Karen's was. Karen's, big. Karen's, was, Karen's, was, Karen's, was, Karen's were getting on my nerves. Where I just wanted to smack Karen my goddamn self. And the thing with the Karens, it never happens to me. I never get in a Karen moment. No, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think yeah. I think uh, the, the the if it's a God, you know me with the religious or whatever it is, ancestors. They said not this one. This person D can't have that Karen incident because I don't yeah, know how yeah. to react. I won't react, react the way that some of these people do. I agree. I probably wouldn't react the same way either. Karen, I'm not, a, a Karen or Ken might get these hands. Well, let well, me ask you a question. I'm not going to pull out. <laughs> that's why I'm not going to pull out my phone. Okay, so let me ask you this question because I heard a a white woman tell me she saw a Karen. So I thought it was universe. I thought it was something that black people called white people. A Karen is just anybody that get on your no, nerves. No, 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 no. It's, no, 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 it's no, a white no, woman no, who's white, seeing them. They in your business doing too much, bro. Too they, much. They, 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 so they're caring too much. That's how the word Karen came up. That's yeah, a good yeah, point. Yeah, yeah they're caring too much. They're <laughs> caring too much. They're caring too much. And when it's other not your business. turn to care, man. When it's not your turn to worry about it, think about it, look at it. Come on, keep it And then and then and then they got the kins out there too. Yeah, the kins are separate. <laughs> they're basically yeah. people that are empowering their whiteness and they figure yeah. hey, you know i'm gonna and, keep and, this black person yep and this time yeah. this time people with the, with the way social media is these karens are getting checked they're losing jobs yeah yeah, yeah. Some yeah. people are making a move them out of uh, apartment complexes and neighborhoods yeah. and stuff like that so <laughs> they now, their dogs. That, they're losing their dogs <laughs> they're losing their dogs <laughs> they're taking the dog karen, too Yep. Well, there was karen. a there was a karen situation in central park, in the central where, park. yeah, the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the they dog. took the ladies they took the ladies dog from them Oh, the wow. brother, yeah, they, they did that, yeah. Yeah, oh, the bird watcher. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aaron, yeah. Welcome, welcome to being black in America. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you try to set it on us, now we set it on you. All right, yeah. respect it on got a taste. Yeah. Wow, man. And yeah. uh, for num number seven, essential workers. Man, we, the we needed those people this year. Yeah, we found, out, we found out who they were. You That's know what right. I mean? And we found That's out right. essential workers. There are certain people. In this, we just cannot do without in yeah. our workforce. And they yeah. found out who they were. And yeah. I think, I hope maybe, I don't know, I'm not, maybe the pay will start to reflect it. It's crazy that the essential workers tend to be on the lower end of the pay scale, but they're essential, man. That's the part that really yeah. gets me out about. Yeah, it. yeah. The, the yeah. thing is, people discovered in, two, in 2020 if their job was essential or not. Exactly. You know, you know what you know what I discovered was essential. I never knew liquor stores were essential. <laughs> they are. Yeah. They're considered essential. I know they kept the peace. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, hey, Rob. We know the marijuana dispensaries. The marijuana dispensaries essential. are considered essential. essential. That's right. They got to keep so, you drunk and high to deal with this. Because <laughs> the dispensaries can dispensaries in New York State can the marijuana is considered medicine. So, right. and I they, got my card. <laughs> and I have my I have my marijuana. Card. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I got yeah, I got yeah. I got problems. I got back, shoulder. I oh, yeah. marijuana. Well, I like, I gotta, can I get some of that from a lumbago? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, alcohol is essential, man. Alcohol is essential. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, listen, number seven, my brother. We oh, we all miss him, miss him, brother Chadwick. Yeah, that passing, yeah, that was that a big loss. Passing, 
that one I think shocked everyone because the brother was so dope. He should have got an award for just doing work, having cancer, and still showing up to work, and nobody knew it. And he was, he delivered on everything. I and mean, he has a new one on Netflix now. The last thing this might be that was his last. That was his last. Saw last night. Oh, yeah. Amazing, bro. Yeah. What, what Already black bottom. Right? Black, there you go. Yeah. Play. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 That was yeah. the Denzel, last movie he made. Yeah, Denzel produced amazing, bro. Two of the four. Yeah. I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna check it out tonight, man. Like that. Check that, that out, bro. It was no that, joke. That's Everybody like, that sees that show, go on there and watch it and support that. Word, yeah. go on there and support it's easy that. to watch and it is wonderful. It will you be like it's it's incredible. And Viola yeah. Davis, of course, you know what I mean. I ain't yeah, yeah, she's did, in did it she, too. Did, did she have a snot bubble in this one? Did she cry with a snot bubble? I don't think she had, but she did have some gold teeth, and that was nice. She had a grill. She had a grill. She had to gain weight for that, and she still couldn't get make weight, and she had to put in a fat suit. Oh wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So she, yeah. that was that that Chadwick man. We're gonna miss that brother. The next the next exactly. one was another another one that we lost an icon. This is a big brother, my my frat brother, Mister J- uh, brother John Lewis. And oh yeah, yeah. CT Vivian. Yeah, so I almost, Vivian. I almost forgot CT Vivian. Good, we forgot. I almost yeah. forgot about that one, Jamie. Yeah, John Lewis was big time man. People like I know uh, a lot of young people don't know who he is. They probably they thought they they just heard about him probably this last year, maybe two. You know when it like uh, the stuff he did over the years, but he was last brother. That was that was with Dr. King. That was yeah, last yeah. brother that made the, the uh, I have right. the dream speech to march on Washington. Yep. John Lewis was right. really really cool brother. I met John. I saw met John Lewis once, and then I met him in passing one time um, um, at the African American Museum. But I met him when he came to Benedict College a couple of years wow. back. Yeah, amazing, I saw him, amazing, I saw him amazing, when brother. I was in Houston. Uh, one of my friends, her church, he came there when Beto was running, and uh, saw John Lewis. It's just it's amazing just to even have a chance to see him in person. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we we need to stand on his shoulders. Absolutely. Yep, him and CT. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then and then uh we already said this, but we're gonna bring it up again. Our brother that set up the year, we should have known this was gonna be a bad year. The brother was dynamic and, he, and the passing Kobe Bryant was is deep because not only did Kobe pass and like we all know we all gonna pass it, but how he passed and who he died with, with his daughter right. and his daughter's friends and stuff like that. That was traumatic and 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 the, and the we, it could have been a preventable death, and that's what I think right. hurt it the most and that, that that happened that way. I mean, Yeah, you know. the suddenness of it, the prevent, you know, the way it could have been prevented, and then, you know, just the reaction and the coming together uh, of various communities, you know, mm-hmm. the way it kind of galvanized people in a way that maybe we kind of needed to share some pain, you know what I mean, together and share our moments together with Kobe. We really mm-hmm. could have used, you know what I mean, it, it, on, on that level, too, I think that was kind of you know, almost cathartic on, on a level, you know, in, in some ways, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, it's, as much so it's, as sad as it was, it was also uh, cathartic, you know what I mean? And, and, and we were just kind of able to just emote and um, and everybody remembers where they were when they got the information, you know? That's yeah, right. it's one of those situations you knew exactly where you were and what you were doing when you heard the news about Kobe passing. Yeah. But the yeah. internet is so foul that, you know, you hear a lot of people, like I heard Eddie Murphy died like, thousand times he was one of the people that they just kept saying died you ever heard that it was like eddie was one of the people that they used to be at eddie murphy it was always a rumor and so i thought when i heard the kobe i thought it was just a rumor i thought it was an internet rumor and then you know when it starts coming in news travels so fast you know and um yeah man it's just it's just tough it, it makes you look at your own mortality you know oh yeah saying? oh yeah, yeah. So I, th- I think that set off that's when people start looking at getting life insurance policies and stuff like that yeah, like, kobe, yeah. Like, like this guy had all the money in the world he's only in his early 40s and to go that like man that hurt that yeah. really hurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was like the blues almost, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, everybody could just kind of, you had all this buildup of things that was going on with people, man. You know, yeah. um, you could just say, you know, things that, you know, it just made you look at life different, you know? Yep. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. And D, yeah. you're right. Yeah, D, you're right. Um, we, people definitely have to make sure they keep getting insurance policy, keep them paid up. You know what I'm saying? Because that's very important as well. You know what I mean? Because I, I know how many, I know how many families I've dealt with where people weren't able to pay for funerals, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and then, brother, and brother, then putting, yeah, and then putting bro. the family in more financial debt as a result this of the funeral. This year, oh my yeah. God, yes. that yeah. right there, this year. I paid, I paid a lot of money to GoFundMe, man. Between yeah, yeah, and yeah. This, this year alone, I sent a lot of GoFundMe and money off, man. Yeah. And, and the so thing is, like, the younger you get it, the lovely, the younger you get life insurance, actually yeah. the cheaper it cheaper is. Cheaper it is, yeah. Exactly. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna do a show on that. That's what we gotta do yeah. a show. Like we gotta get the show whole life and term life, we definitely gonna do a show on that. Mm-hmm. So the number the number three is our first black uh vice president. Yes, Mr. Miss Kamala Harris. Well, I'm not yeah. a big fan of, but right, right. But you know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Right. But you got a lot of, listen, listen. 
she's got a lot. If, if we asking questions, she got a lot to answer for, right? But considering what we're coming through, we just got to take somebody that just doesn't look like a joke. And then, you know, and she's, and we got to, and we just got to put it in there and just see what's happening and see what comes out of it, man. You know, yeah, you got to give it, you got to give it a chance. You got to give it a shot and, you know, and see. And, and, Brother, at this point, I'll take Megan Thee Stallion. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and bro, you know, this, this dude we just left behind, bro. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. You got us looking crazy. But- Anything yeah. is a, anything is a step up from anything is a step up from him. But no, I, I yeah. actually I like I like Kamala. I like um her as a senator. I love the way she would go in any yeah. hearing. I don't care what she start off with the protocol like thank you for coming, glad to see you, and then she just goes in. I like that. But I know a lot of people have a, a problem with her as a prosecutor. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I just as a, in the Senate, I thought she just got busy. You know what I mean? And plus, I thought she was really cool with Obama. Um, I used to love their interaction um, early on. So, but again, um, to see the history, to see the first black male president, uh, first female black uh, VP, it's just great, a great time to live. I can only imagine that people that lived years and years before us could not imagine. I mean, some people couldn't imagine eating at a lunch counter or walking in, the, you know, sitting in front of the bus, but then to see this, uh, the top of the government, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I think, I think it's beautiful. I think we need to, I think there's some, some, some young sisters Young girls that need to see her be in her position, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, just you know, we need that just on another level, just maybe even on a symbolic level. We just yeah. need her there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, Definitely. You know, I, yeah. We gotta support that system. Though. Yep. Sure. Yeah, I I said this on one of the past shows. You know, it it did surprise me that a woman of color became the vice president or president before a white woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that and that white women actually prefer to have a white male as their vice president or their president now, because, you know, Hillary Clinton ran for president and she lost and majority of white women in America still voted for Trump. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that, that, sh- that, that kind of reveals something to me that white American women do not want to see a female in office in the white house, mm-hmm. you know? So. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I think the other thing is this, the fact that she's a VP behind the oldest presidential ever yet. Uh, elect, president ever elected. So, I mean, there's a great chance. Well, I shouldn't say it like that because it sounds right. foul. But I mean, like, <laughs> but, say, but, like I said, say I said it. Say I said it. But like, yeah, she need to be on the sidelines <laughs> warming up. I just put it like that. Yeah, That's yeah. All. Joe, Joe, gonna see the upper room maybe before the next four years. <laughs> see, I didn't want to, went, come on, Joe, D, Joe come on, the D, because he got the alley oop. He, he ain't gonna take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, the number D two. D gonna say that shit. D gonna say that shit. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. Gonna, I'm gonna say it. Hey, I might be a little high on the show. No, let's fuck with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take this one. Oh man, <laughs> look, at Sam, look at Jamie there. Number two, brother George Floyd. Sister Brianna Taylor, brother Aubrey, and brother Elijah McCain. Yeah, very Those tragic. Big. That that yeah. set off the trend. I think that was one of the nails in the coffin for this presidential race. For a lot of other yeah. people, out of other seats too. Um, it, you know, it, and Rodney, you can probably talk a lot about how how it, it should should change police departments and how they police people, and especially yeah. people in our in, in black and Latino communities. Um, yeah. but you know, we sacrifice. You know, sometimes. Like you know, and Kelvin, you can do the biblical stuff. You throw some words, but the sacrifice always happens for a greater movie. And these yeah. brother, and these and these people were like, you know, they were they were sacrificed for us, hopefully, as people to come together and also for the change policies in government. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, from a person that has um law enforcement background, like when I saw the Joy Floyd incident, I, I was I was horrified by it. I was horrified by mm-hmm. it, and I I think the mistake that um law enforcement did made was you know. They wouldn't. They wouldn't come openly out and just condemn it. You know what I mean. And that was my problem with it. Maybe that was one of my mm-hmm. problems with it. Like where I felt like a lot of people in the departments all over this nation should have came together and said, "No, we're not going to tolerate that," and basically hung this guy from the rafters. And it and and it just seems like you know how people came out, slandered this guy, you know, victimized the victim. You know, made, went in the guy's background, tried to find everything possible about him to villainize him. When you just sat there and watched a man just be, you know, just murdered right in front of your eyes. I, 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 like I said, I was horrified by mm-hmm. it. And then, mm-hmm. this, like I said, and to see, like, see law enforcement, like, stand behind it. I, I just was disgusted by it. Disgusted. Yeah. Right. Yep. I think this was, I, I, you know, I think this was a year where, um, 
I guess your average Joe Blow white guy or white woman could see all the things that we have been telling complaining about, about, yeah, about, complain about yeah. from not just the death, but from the cover up, as you say, you know what that comes afterward, the the, the assassination of the mm-hmm. character afterward, you know what I mean? Just you know, just the media spin that comes afterward. It's yeah. something when you see something like that that is just completely indefensible, time after time after time, and then you see the same script. Happen time after time after time. It's the same reaction. It's got to lead critics. After a while, even if you came in skeptical, you have to be like, "Man, I just keep seeing it myself now, and I keep hearing about it. Now I'm yeah. seeing it. It's got to. It's got to leave a mark somewhere." Yeah, it's like just Scott said. Even white people were horrified by what right. they had saw. You know, well, most white people. Some white people still feel like yeah, the police, there was nothing. The police, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was nothing. The police are right no matter what, and they don't. And see that's it, just it, the way it is. Yep, and they don't, they don't see, see it, no value. They don't see no value. There's no value lives. in our lives. Like they yeah. and, they, and they just released a new tape on the brother Aubrey, the, the white man, just standing around and get cuffed. He's walking around with blood on yeah. him. That was yeah. that, that was that was insane and crazy. That, right. that, that that was what she what she basically what they basically did on that scene was basically they automatically assume that the white guys were right they already they automatically assume that they were the good guys without the investigation now you come on a scene you see somebody shot they got guns and there's somebody laying on the ground guess what everyone's supposed to get cuffed up and you figure it out later on but basically you knew that the father i think the father was a retired police mm-hmm. officer yep. yep so and then the i think the officer was familiar with the father you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the, the they gave them entirely too much courtesy and not knowing what was going on. They basically should they should have been handcuffed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And num- and number one, we go back again. I'm sorry, I went to break. I did the list wrong. But COVID nineteen, it was horrible. Still a topic. I mean, we it's kind of started in March, and now we we, we in December. We have over three hundred thousand deaths. I forgot seventeen million people have have caught the virus. Hopefully in 2021 that we get past some people start getting. Uh, I mean, I, you know, this, whatever you want to do with this, the shots, getting the shots, and not getting the shots. But hopefully we see some light at the end of this tunnel. But 20, COVID 19 is the story, of the topic. I think this they changed the election. I think it changed everything in, in the world. How are we gonna go move forward? Yeah, yeah I think yeah. You, can make, you can make an argument that um, it has touched either directly or indirectly every other subject that we've mentioned on this list. You know what I mean? So you know, you know, from you know, online workers to essential workers or anything else, you know what I mean? You know, even down to the coverage of news and, and everything. I think it's touched everything, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The thing the yeah. thing is like not life life is was like taken away from us as what we considered normal, you know, as a normal life. Going out to eat, going to the movies. I mean, you can't you can't I mean I, I used me and my wife used to go to the movies all the time. I can't even remember the last time we went to the movies, yeah. you know. And look how many, I mean, movie theaters are probably not going to come back. There's a movie theater by my house that went out of business. It's not going to reopen, you know. So there's there's a lot of things that's not going to come back from COVID. A lot of people are going to be financially damaged. But there's also a lot of corporations that capitalized off COVID. They made a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And listen, I thought the movies were going, movie theaters were going out of business because I was sneaking in the movies. Yes, what you got to lot, Bro, I, listen, I go in at 1 o'clock, bro. I ain't leaving the movie theater at 8 o'clock. I just want to take a moment. Especially downtown Brooklyn. We never going to get anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the Court Street Theater is the best place to sneak in. But now since it's <laughs> I, I can say that. I can say that. Court Street Brooklyn. Oh, man. You know, I tell you one, the good thing about um the, the movies, they pushed a lot of movies back. They pushed that big movie Batman back. And, you know, I don't oh, like I, I don't like Batman. I hate Batman. I don't like yeah. it. Brad said Nate Robinson was... <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, Nate, we're yeah. honorable mention Nate Robinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nate Bro, Robinson. It's been a few weeks and Nate still can't get up. <laughs> Damn, Nate. Damn, Nate. Damn, Nate. All right, Damn. look, this is what it is, though. Coming to America, that's what I'm waiting for. Oh, Coming yeah. to America, yeah. too. Although Leslie Jones is his uh, the mother of his child in there. So I got to talk to you about that. Yeah, but anyway, said it, the- it's coming in March. Somebody oh, said Nate Robinson in the Popeye chicken sandwich. But, I, but I, heard, I, I thought it was last year Popeye's. I came out this year. I can't remember, man. Scott wants to know why, why I don't like Batman. For, for <laughs> the reason I don't like Batman is because Batman's not a superhero. Batman paid to be a superhero. He's a rich white man. Yeah, white, white yeah. privilege. He's the epitome <laughs> of white privilege. So he Just like Iron see? Man. Iron Man did the same thing. He had a whole bunch of money to make himself a yep. superhero. Yep. And basically, as a result of white privilege, that's why I don't like Batman. <laughs> now Batman, Batman is probably the, and I'm gonna go in now on Batman since you brought it up. Batman, 
Batman's probably the only superhero you could walk up to him and punch him in his face and get away with it. And it, try try walking up to Wolverine and punching him in the face. You lose your arm. You know what I'm saying? I don't like Batman. All right, the, the real talk, of Rodney. Did something happen between you and Batman? Was there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, I don't like Batman. This is deeper than. <laughs> deeper than this place. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, so listen, man. Listen, hey, we're all are talking. We still got our sponsors coming back, man. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Ronnie, can you talk about this? Our promos coming right now. Yo, we got a we got a sponsor, Real Life, Real Life Brand Sixty Eight, and um, they're basically an apparel company. We got some we got some positive, strong messages on t shirts, hoodies, men and women apparel. And went to coats and jackets and stuff like that. But um, they were decided that they were going to be a sponsor for us on this show. And we are happy to have them. So we're going to go to that commercial, Jamie. Hit them. Hit them. You know, yeah, I wear my I wear my woke as fuck shirt everywhere. I don't go fuck with whatever. That's right. I don't go down. So that's listen, right. we wanted to do something different, like we said before. We wanted to make sure, like what uh, they, that's what I'm talking about. That's we want right. to we want to make sure that you know, we, like people that support us, we want to make sure we support them. And like we like and the thing with in our community, we we talk about the natives, but the natives got to understand we have to start circulating our our resources. So we have a platform here, and we have our friends that have their own businesses. Well, we got to support each other. So we want to start showcasing every single month. Someone we know with a business, if you making anything, jewelry, if you uh, spray painting stuff, please let us know. So we got our first person that answered the call. This is my sister. I've known her for a long, long, long time. She has a great product that I use every single day. People think my beard, I don't dye my beard, people. My beard is black. The sister gave me the natural juices and berries. Um, <laughs> well, whatever you take and give me some, cause it ain't oh, working yeah. over here. Yeah. Listen, oh, listen, yeah. I, I'm waiting for her to make a product, make my hair grow back. Once you get that, I'm straight. But this, yeah, is my, oh, grill. <laughs> <laughs> this is my sister Tia and our company TT Butter. Uh, Jamie, can right. you bring in our sister Tia, please? Hey Tia. Hey, how you, how you doing? What up, sis? What's up? What's up? How you doing? Right. How you doing? I'm Chilling good. I see them. some beards. I see y'all talking mad shit. I see some beards. <laughs> and <beautiful berries. laughs> I got you mine on. Put your boys on. You better tell yeah, listen, them. Listen, listen, listen. I tell them. Like, I'm, I'm for real with it. I really do have my butters there. I ain't playing no games, man. I treat Fact. my face every day. Yeah, I treat yeah. my face every day. Every day I treat my face. Love you too. Love you too. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about your business, Tia. What you got for us? All right, TT's uh, Butter Company started in about 2016. Um, I started the line to help my nephews with their eczema. And so my first product was Bubba Butter. Uh, and because I call my nephews Bubba, that was their body butter, right? So Bubba Butter is a cult favorite. If you've got extremely dry skin, eczema or psoriasis of the scalp, you have it on your neck, your back, wherever, Bubba is going to help you. And I'm telling you, it's it's magical. Um, it helps with ashy elbows. Uh, ashy elbows. And for the guys, I've got a mosh cheese mo butter because, you know, men feel some kind of way about wanting to put on lotion. So y'all out here using Vaseline. Oh, hell no. <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> no, nobody's using not me, not me, not me. Okay, what, you, so. what you got for the feet? <laughs> <laughs> Body butter, bubba butter. We've got a couple of things that can help out anything that's going on with our skin. Mm. So yeah, I do have an oil for your hair. I'm growing hair. As you can see, I'm trying to cover some of it. But um, 
Yeah, we trust oils for your hair. We have the men's line, uh, which is the Beard Collective. It has a beard oil, beard wash, beard okay. balm, and Mosh Chismo body butter. Mosh Chismo smells similar to the men's beard care products, so a lot of guys like it. It's light enough that it's not going, going to conflict with your cologne, so you can layer. That's one of those things that a lot of women do. We layer our scent. And so our body butter is going to smell different from our perfume. And it, and it works the same way with men. Your body butter will smell different than your cologne, but it's all going to layer and it's going to linger. That's what you really want. And so for guys, you know, that that beard balm, that wash, that oil, it's essential to do it every day. And Zaman, he'll tell you, you know, you have to start with it every day. Stop using your hair shampoo your girl shampoo on your face. It wasn't developed for the uh, sensitive skin on your face. It's going to strip all the oils out of your face. And you're going to be around here with beard drift and you don't even know, mm. right? You didn't walked up on guys before and they've got beard drift. And it's like, yo, my man, you, something's in your beard right here. Get that, get that. And it's, and it's actually dandruff because the skin under your beard is dry. Wow, so, I thought it was Chi I thought it was Chinese food that was in his beard. It could be a little bit of, it could be a little bit of anything, right? It could yeah. be crust from all kinds of other stuff. So, hey, 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 that's hey, hey, another hey. show. <laughs> that's another show, but no, for real. So you know, TT started with you know the idea of just helping my nephews with their eczema, and um, it just kind of birthed into all kinds of products. We've got the beard care line. We've got three body butters hair oil. Um, I have a detox cl uh, clay that you can use okay. below the belt oil called sweet spot, which is unisex and it's for your sweet spot. We could talk about that. Um, we've got lip balm, sweet spot. What, what do you mean sweet spot? Uh, what is sweet spot? Yeah. What's mean sweet spot? I don't have a sweet spot. <laughs> oh, you got a sweet spot. Hey, don't talk, don't, nobody talk about no booty buttons. <laughs> No, yeah. no, it's not. I don't know. I don't no, know. What's, what's the, what's the gentlemen, gentlemen, listen to me. So go for sweet it. Spot is for everyone, right? Because we all work out. We're all in for women. If we're working out, we're in Lycra for a couple of hours. Guys, you're in gym shorts, right? Everything might not be as breathable as we would like for it to be. And we'll get in a shower and we're washing and scrubbing and you think you got it all. But what you don't know is that when she puts her face down there, she can still smell the gym. Oh, wow. See, Derek, so, I told you. So, I told see, Derek, you. that's why you got a manscape. That's why you got a oh, manscape. You know what? Oh. Like, you learn something new every day, and, right? And, 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 get, and get teaching. And, so, and there's still <laughs> something going on. There's some residue. There's still something going on up underneath. Like, so you you're saying, so you're saying, look. Okay, okay, so you're saying there could be a, a little bit of a little bit of funk trapped in the creases. Fact. <laughs> okay. Fact. okay. And so sweet spot is for the creases. That okay. Okay. There I got we go. it now. now I, I understand. It. I got it. Right. Got it. And so it's gonna smell different on everybody. Um, uh -huh. And that's just sweet spot, right? Right. Right there up under that crease. That's the sweet spot. Okay. okay. All right. Sweet okay. spot. All right. All right. Let, let me. Let me. Let me ask you a question about the beards, right? You see, yeah. Derek and D have full beards. Like yeah. I have a very close beard. I can still use the beard butter for mine, even Absolutely. though it's not that heavy. Absolutely. It's okay. it's developed. My father wears a goatee. Okay. And like a mustache. Me. Yeah. He okay. has a goatee and a mustache just right here. Okay. And he uses it. Okay, good, let, good, let, good. Let me ask you this question. Are we just um damaging our skin and don't realize it? I like for instance, we go to the barber shop. I know I do. After I, they'll they'll shave me, they'll spray alcohol and i heard that's terrible for your skin is that is that accurate um, i guess it dries it out very accurate it dries it out a lot of our products because we're not flipping the label over flipping that bottle over reading the label um that was the other reason why i developed the products because when i decided to go to a plant-based uh eating life you know that's just my whole life is just plants every time i picked up something <sighs> a product, I'm reading the back of it. It's got a bunch of stuff in it I couldn't recognize. Mm -hmm. Alcohol is a main offender in a lot of our products because it helps a number of things. It helps oils and waters kind of blend together, right? So you'll find alcohol in a lot of things that you wouldn't think is necessary. It will dry your skin out. And so a lot of guys going to the barbershop, you're getting that, that tape right here. Mm -hmm. He's hitting you with the razor. 
he's you're getting razor burn, right? And you'll see a guy with razor burn. It's darker up here than it is closer to his hairline. That's the razor burn. So you want to treat that. You've got to get a butter on your face. Got to get off okay. the alcohol. It's good to for an astringent to clean it out, but you don't want to hit yourself with that alcohol every day and not be replenishing those oils. Mm -hmm. So okay. TT's line, TT's line will help you guys with all of that. And it's okay. It's so I mean, it's you can't look at taking care of yourself and your skin as being feminine, right? Uh -huh. Everyone has to take care of their skin. Your skin is your largest organ. And okay. for us, you know, as melanated people, we've got to do, we've got to go the extra mile for sure. Okay. So TT's is for you. I got something for everybody. Yeah, you got you got products for facials and stuff too? Absolutely. TT's okay. uh, detox clay that'll help you with your facial. Okay. You got, you got bad yeah. stuff, all kinds of stuff on the way. TT, where can people find you at? TT's www.tetesbutterco.com. TT's Butter Co. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. You can find me online. You can. I ship. I'm, I do a lot of shipping to New York. Yep. Yeah. Well, All you right. know you ship to me. So. Oh, and, sure. and, God, and guys, I got to say also with a product, it does make your beard. Women, um, guys got to understand, it makes your beard softer. So when you're hugging yes. your lady and stuff like that, so it is, it's softer. It does smell real good. I put it on every day. I shower every single That's how I wash my face with her product. All I use. I don't use no that's soap the other on my piece. face. Definitely. That's the other piece. You want that beard hair to soften up. Mm -hmm. You want it to push out of the skin. You don't want it to curl back. So um, you have to exfoliate, gentlemen, underneath here. Those razor bumps. Your skin's getting dry. That razor is cutting you up. You definitely want to be exfoliating your skin. So it's a. I have a whole product line to help you all with that. Okay. But definitely, she won't tell you. Or maybe she will. It's rough on her thighs and she doesn't like it. So yeah, yo, hey, it's yeah. a children's show. This is a children's show. Get <laughs> that TTs. TTs to help you out with it. You don't want those oh, we don't want that problem. Yeah, we gonna go to TTs. You don't want those problems. No, no, yeah. no problem. <laughs> Tia, yeah. thank you so much for coming on. Thank you I for love having you, me. Thank Anybody? you. I love you too. I love you, Tia. Look, Tia, look for my order. I'm gonna order some. It's coming. Gotcha. Mine too. It's I, I tell all the brothers and brothers, especially the brothers. I know sisters could get her products. She had great women products, but I'm telling you, brothers, the products are the truth. I'm telling you now. I love Thank that. you. All right, TT. Thank you. Later, Thank baby. You. Right. Love Thank you, girl. You. Love you too, guys. All right. Bye. All right. All right. That's oh, what I'm to you. I moved up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, I thought Jamie promoted me for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so you saw you put me big on the screen. I said, oh, shit, I got a raise. <laughs> so we have, we, we have another person coming on today. And Derek, can you bring this person on for us? Oh, yeah. This is um, <laughs> um, one of the, uh, this is an incredible person. Oh, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. This is an incredible person. All right. I want y'all to come out and, and enjoy it. She's, she's often in the comments. Uh uh, during the show, and she is an amazing, amazing businesswoman, amazing person, and an amazing uh, cake decorator. And uh, she's very close to me. Her name is Norette Bazemore, Bella Latina Cakes. Wow. Wonderful. My wife. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Yo, that Hennessy cake is gonna sell out. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yo, amazing stuff yeah. there. Amazing the, stuff. Very impressive. Those are hot. The, 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 the natives love Hennessy. Yeah, they, they love it. Love it. Yes. They love it. Yes. 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 
Oh, yeah. she'll do a white Hennessy cake. You'll be she'll be a millionaire in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. yeah. She, yeah. Should a, she should make a white Hennessy cake says duty free. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, she does some oh, stuff man. that amazes me, man. You know, so um, wow. so yeah, I'm hoping you know that's at the end of my. She's a wonderful person, wonderful wife, of course, and I'm very blessed and lucky. Beautiful. Yes, sir, man. Let's, let's bring her on. Let's bring her on. Yeah, waiting on her. Yeah, there we go. Hey, honey. Hey, hey girl. Hey, girl. Oh, another yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Hey girl. Hi everybody. Can you Hi, see you? Good to see you. Yeah. How you doing? Thank you guys. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. No problem. Yeah, welcome, no welcome, problem. Welcome, 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 welcome. Let me answer your first question. What made you get into cake baking? Oh gosh. I got into cake baking about 19 years ago. Mm. Um I was living in another state and um I needed to make some extra money. And so, because I had a corporate gig and I needed to make some extra money, so I kind of tapped into some some childhood memories because uh, my great grandparents had a bakery in Costa Rica. My mother, I grew up with my mother making custom cakes on the side, and so I said, "Oh, I could do this." So I thought, <laughs> and so yeah, I started doing cakes, and it didn't start off all that great, but you know, I've been in the game 19 years now, and so it's definitely gotten better. So you could probably do it in your sleep now. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I do do it in my sleep because I wake up like, oh, wait, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. I need to hey, home, shoot. Hey, listen, I need, I, I need you to make a cake for Derek. Uh, it's going to be uh -huh. a feet with, with uh, pedicure cake. You're going to have a feet and a scraper <laughs> and, a, a, and a, a pumice stone. I want that one. That's what I want for Derek. Hey, I'm make sure you... out about the pumice stone. I'm finding information out. <laughs> make sure you make the toenails real long. <laughs> Because I hate to break it to you, my husband has better looking feet than most women. Oh! Oh! Look how he sat back. Look how he sat back. Yeah, he sat back. Say that one more time. You know, I sat back and I watched y'all give it to him, and I was like, "Look, if you ask me, I'm gonna tell it." Let me let me let me ask you this question. I um, from my perspective, I have to perform weddings every now and then. And it just mm -hmm. dawned on me one day, like if I don't make it there, these people are not married and any mistake could be. So I'm thinking about you with, when you have a, the, the pressure, what is the pressure like to come up with a cake that is so important to people's special event? Do you feel a certain pressure when you have to just nail it? You know, I feel pressure, whether it's a wedding cake or it's, you know, a cake to feed six people. It, you know, because the thing about my job is, you know, how you can go to, let's say, your your day to day job. And, you know, if you have a bad day, your boss is not going to really say anything. Right. You know, OK, I'm so tired or they had a rough week or whatever or something's going on. I don't get that. You know, right. I have to be 100 percent for every single person. So if I'm putting 15 cakes out a week, I have to be on it 15 right. times. I don't right. you know, I don't get to have a bad day. So wow. whether it's a small or it's a big cake, it's always pressure to bring my best self to that cake so that client can be wowed. Because their occasion is their occasion. It may be a one-shot deal. And, and it's and, important to them. So it has right. to be equally as important to me. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. This is your brand. Your, your name, your face is on this. You have to stand by right. it. Yeah. Let me Absolutely. ask you a question. What's what's the strangest cake somebody's asked you to make? The Derek cake. Derek cake. Derek. <laughs> Yo, Derek got a new okay. name. His name is Sugarfoot now. Sugarfoot or oh. AKA Sweet Toes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all love. It's all love. Oh, wow. It's all love. Uh, it is. Oh, yeah. no, but what's the strangest, strangest cake you ever made? Oh goodness, I don't, I don't know because I have turned down cakes. You know, people okay. say, hey, "Will you make?" And I'm like, "No, I don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do that. Yeah, but but yeah. um. I've done so many interesting things. You know, I love doing interesting things that I've never done before, like uh, a human heart, for example. Wow. Um, I did a 
human heart for a cardiologist at the Cohen's Children's Hospital out there by LIJ. Okay. Um, that surgeon happened to save the life of my client's seven-year-old daughter. Wow. So I, wow. Uh, that's that's that deep. Doctor. That's deep. Yeah. That's yeah. Deep. Yeah. That was that was something else. I, you know, I've done things like a a, 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 a physical, like a corset, like a woman's corset, mm -hmm. you know, black and purple. Um, just so many different interesting things. And I've been doing this for years. So, of course, my memory escapes me of all the things that I've done, to be quite honest with you. But the human heart cake is definitely one of the fan favorites. People love the money cake for some reason, where it's actual, you know, a edible favorite. money on the cake and around the cake. That is a mm -hmm. huge fan favorite. That's, that's the natives. That's the natives. Yeah, yeah, I, was the natives. Natives. I was one of them. I was one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I make it rain cake. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. Natives. That's natives. Yeah. We we know different cakes. Native cake. You know what I'm saying? We we know <laughs> working class people that's cake. You know? cake. Yeah, that's banana pudding cake. Yeah. You yeah, know. well, she makes this banana pudding cake, bro. I don't know if you like banana pudding. Anybody likes banana pudding? Oh my God, that's the life changer. I call that the life changer. Derek, wow. does it keep yeah. Derek? Does it keep you on your toes? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what made me come home with a pond cake right there. Oh <laughs> okay, what is your what is your favorite cake? Oh, good question. Mine, yeah. In terms of flavor or design? No, design. I'm talking about that you like when you eat cake. What is your favorite? Somebody else's. Really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can imagine. Okay. Let me explain to you why I say that. Because okay. I've been doing this a long time. I know, I know my cake is good. I know my cake is really good because I have recipes that are from my mother and I have imported, you know, vanillas and, and different things that I get from all over the world. So I know my stuff is good, but I'm used to my stuff. So when you know my best friend wants to bake me a cake or my cousin wants to bake me a cake or my sister that's the cake I love because it doesn't taste like my cake. Mm -hmm. You understand? Oh. So what is I the pressure for Derek for on your birthday? Cake. Derek, what are you doing on my birthday, birthday with cake? On, on Facebook, every year I go on Facebook for my birthday and I beg for somebody to bake me a cake. And it don't have to be fancy. They can literally go to, to the grocery store and get a box cake and some box icing and bake me a cake. But the fact that they would do it and put their love into it, I love that cake. There was oh, a young, wow. girl, a young girl who, who was, a, was a young girl who made the cake for you one time. She made a Tanisha's young girl. Daughter, she, Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Tanisha's yeah. daughter, Jordan. When she was 10 years old, one of my clients, yeah, her daughter is like, Miss Norette is my cake lady. So for my birthday, her mom was like, Miss Norette needs it once a birthday cake. And Jordan was like, I'll make it. And they brought me the cake from Central Islip. The little girl made me a birthday cake. The uh, best birthday cake. Wow. Wow. It, was, it, was awesome. it was awesome for a million reasons. But the coolest birthday cake I've ever had, I have to admit, was the one I made for my 40th birthday, and it was a pink KitchenAid mixer. Oh, that's wow. hot. That's hot. Did yeah. you own when an Easy Bake Oven at one point in your life? <laughs> I might have. I don't remember. That's, that's where everybody used to get their start at. The Easy Bake Oven was just a heat lamp or something, right? You guys remember the Easy Bake Oven? <laughs> yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I remember. Throw down with the Easy Bake. Yeah, <laughs> throw down with that. Yo, listen, be honest with you. I wanted to be a baker. My father wouldn't let me go to school for that. When, I, when, when he was going to high school, I was going to go to Park West. You know, my father old school. Yeah. Old school still the man. So he thought I was going to be gay or something like that. So he's like, nah, my son ain't going there. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to keep it a buck. No, real, real. That's, that's real talk. My father yeah, said, nah, he's old you know, school. He's like, nah, you're not doing that. And yeah, now yeah. Look, look at the money I could have been making. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> no, you but know? D, your cakes would be all revolutionary and stuff like that. I <laughs> 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 make one cake. <laughs> <laughs> one cake with a black fist, right? <laughs> or, or a public enemy cake. Uh, so so let me ask you this question, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you. And anybody that runs a business, we still have to do business with the natives. So have, how has it been from the business side? We know you have the, the skill set. Is the business side, I, I'm sure a lot of people look at, the, at your business like every day is just happy, you're making cakes and everything. But the business side, how has that been dealing with the client base? You know what? My clients, for the most part, they're awesome because they trust me. Oh, man. And so, you know, they send me their vision and I would say half the time, I never have time, probably more than half the time, they're going to rent. This is what I want. I know you're going to bring me something fabulous. Most of the time, I do have the occasional pain in the butt who wants to try to micromanage me, but I've learned how to manage down and get them off me so I can do what I do. I'm like, you called me. 
And you got referred to me nine times out of 10. So it's because I know what I'm doing. I need you to let me do what I do. Right. But yeah. um, I love the Chris clientele. And I'm thankful I have a mixed clientele. You know, it's not just quote unquote the natives. I have clientele from all walks of life, backgrounds, careers, degrees, non degrees, yeah. everything. Christo wow. Christopher McBride paid you a great compliment. He said your cakes are yummy and they're delicious. You're doing and a great job. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate right. you. And Dana's in these comments too. She said, uh, chocolate cake will slap your mom. Let's slap somebody. Yeah, it will. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this, this, no, right. This is my last question to you. Um, how are you? And I think Nikki might have said this also. Do you when you go to another place in a restaurant, you have someone else's cake, do you do you ever say like, oh hell no, this ain't it? As a cake, okay, like a so cake. that happens to me often, you know, when I go places, and because people know I'm a cake maker, they're always watching me to see if I eat the cake. <laughs> 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 So even if it's terrible, I gotta be like, oh, this is nice. Uh, yeah. But then he's oh, actually man. a soprano actor who came through. All right, all right. Well, I'm a soprano. I'm, I, I'm, I tell you, I would never shade anybody. One thing that I'm really big on is helping others. And so I'm actually, you know, I'm thankful that I get to mentor other cake makers where they call me and ask me for advice. And I'm happy to share. You know, I don't give out recipes. So don't ask me that. But yeah. I'm happy to share about yeah. techniques and how I figured this out and where to get this particular thing. And, you know, so I, I do I do like that aspect of it, being able to mentor other cake, you know, no, no. cake makers, whether they're my age or younger. No, right. Where can people find you at? You guys can find me. I'm real easy to find. <laughs> you can mm -hmm. find me on Facebook, on Instagram uh, at BellaLatinaCakes.com. You can text me directly at 516-429-9411. Um, I have business hours. So, you know, feel free to scan my pages and find out what my business hours are because that's when I respond. But wait but, a minute. Um, we're we're bearing the lead. What's the soprano actor story someone just asked about? Soprano uh, actor that came to your door? Is that... Oh yeah, I I did a cake for one of the um one of the guys that was on the Sopranos. I can't remember the gentleman's name because it's been probably close to ten years ago now. But uh, yeah, he wanted a he wanted a chocolate raspberry cake. Wow! And so yeah, I did wow. I did a cake nice. for him. Very, very nice. Nice. Or and he came to Thank you. Himself. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. Really? Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, sister. We love you. I know Derek loves you, Thanks. and uh, you can. And you can do his feet later on today. That's the only way I know this brother got nice feet because you must be doing them on the low. You don't have to blow him up, blow him up on the show, but we know you're doing that work for him. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, thank you, you so much. Good genetics. Good genetics, brother. Good genetics. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sister. Uh, thank you. Continue. Oh, man. Right, bye, guys. bye, sister. Bye. Oh, man. That's <laughs> Derek, we, we ain't going to live this down, Derek, man. We're going to get on oh. you. Calvin got a promotion. Calvin, you got a promotion. Just for a Kevin, second. Okay. They, they always yeah. give it to you and take it right back. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. No, oh, I think, I still, no, 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 no. I, there's a rumor that Derek done had a foot transplant. That's what it is. You done had work done. That's what it is. Derek, Derek is wearing that white man's feet. <laughs> you know, let me tell you something. Right. You, know your wife, you know your wife is good at making cakes when she get a soprano. Uh, actor from Sopranos and don't remember who he was to come to the door. Yeah, it was uh, that's when, my, my man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you know. That's when you when you know you're good with yours. That was so, good. So, Rod, Rod, can you uh, can you lead us to our next uh, person in commercial? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got our next um, um, entrepreneur who is coming along. She's a great friend of mine. Um, I love her personally. I think she's an awesome person. She makes beautiful head wraps, mask, and um. She is no, next, I think, right? no, I think we're going to Lisa. No, we're going to Lisa. Lisa, no. Lisa. Okay, I'm sorry. Then I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm lost. Then I guess you got to do that then. Okay, so know. our next person is our sister Lisa, who actually did our, our photo shoots. I'm going to come back. Lisa I'm going to hold that. <laughs> I'm going to hold that thought. I'm going to come back with that one. Okay, all right. All right. But go ahead. Jamie, do we have a commercial, Sammy?
right. Nice. Nice. Nice capturing the people, man. So, yeah. Sister Lisa, can we bring Lisa to the studio, Jammy? Hey, hey Lisa. Hey, Lisa, what doing? up? Yo, what up? What up? What up? You blowing up? What's going on, guys? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hanging, hanging in there. Can't complain. Can't complain. Still doing yeah. COVID, capturing, catching moments. I see you catching moments. That camera you got there. Yeah, I tried. I um, I started my business February of this year. Um, I had been taking pictures forever, but I started my photography business about a month before COVID. And um, it was an interesting journey, put it that way. Um, I did about 40 families with the quarantine porch photos um, back in April, um, where I would you know, go to houses and use my telephoto lens and take um, pictures of people on their porches. And some people didn't have porches, but it was it was fine. Um, and um, that's where I started. I actually, right before COVID, I did my first maternity shoot. It was like February eighth. It was it was we were lucky here. It was about forty degrees that day, and um, I did a maternity two maternity shoots, and. Um, then we got shut down. So um, I've been very fortunate to be able to um, photograph people. I did a lot of photographs for graduates, uh, kids that graduated um, 2020. I did many family um, family portraits. Um, and over the summer, when sports started to open back up, I was able to do league photography because that's one of the things I really wanted to get into. Um, so I was able to capture um, people who were actually playing because a lot of the sports in New York are shut down. So I was able to um, get a, a bunch of um, makeshift leagues and kids together and take some pictures. That's Lisa, um, let, me, let me ask one thing that, that people may not know about you, the brilliance, your brilliance is I've seen you um, like do a show, a shoot with four people. One of them would be a sex symbol, and the other three would be all right. But you make everybody feel equal. How do you, how do you do that? Like that, it's just amazing how you. I, I, I've actually seen you do that. So how, how is that done? <laughs> Who, who's a sex symbol, Kelvin? Who's a sex? Well, symbol? well, I don't want to like. I don't want to leak information out. I just want to, you know, you know, we don't want to hurt feelings and stuff. Like that. You guys were a lot of fun to take to take pictures of um, because you all have very different personalities. And what I like to do is I, I like to um, see how you work together and see the different personalities. Um, a lot of times it's it's difficult, especially with family dynamics, um, depending on what happens to be going on that day or whatever. But, you know. You just try and you, for me, you have to wing it. It's like, you know, I, I took pictures of a two year old and I think I must've did 200 shots and you know, 170 of them were, were her backside running away. So, you know, I, I was exhausted that day. I was exhausted. I have to rethink my, my pool of what I want to take <laughs> pictures of, but two year olds, I'm not too sure about, but um, you know, I, I like taking candid photos. I like taking, um, photos of people in their element without really posing. Um, I enjoy those more than posed um, uh, photography. I think the pictures come out a lot better. Um, but, you know, with adults, it's a lot easier to take pictures because people follow instructions, you know, it's just, it's a lot easier. And, right. and um, it's, it's, um, it's been a journey. Um, it's, it's been a journey. Yeah. Lisa, how do you manage? How do you manage expectations? You know, with clients, like you know, and what's your process like? You know, um, <laughs> yo, hey, hey, that, that's my man in the back. He always coming through. My man coming through. <laughs> yeah, we got the man We never know what you're going to get. But how do you manage expectations? You know what I mean? Because sometimes you may have a client that may just come in and say, "Hey, you know what? I mean? Almost want to take over your your, your your shoot. Almost, you know, say." Get us over here and take us over here and you know that kind of thing. You know, how did you kind of manage that? And what's your process like when you kind of come in and 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 you know, I guess communicate a vision to your clients. What's that like? Well, I had I it's funny, I had a client like that. I had an hour shoot with a family of five. And um 
you know, the mom was like, oh, I want to I want to shoot over by here and I want to shoot over by here. And, you know, for, for me, it's it's more of a learning experience. So there are questions that I need to ask beforehand. You know, all children are different and a lot of children are on the spectrum, you know, but I'll figure that out 10 minutes into a shoot. And then maybe I'll have the parent go, oh, you know, my son is, you know, he's he's a little on the spectrum. Yeah, I, I know. I figured that out. But, you know, some people, I want to take a picture over here. Well, I can't take a picture there because you're in the sun. You, you know, sun is not your friend when you're taking pictures. You know, so people are like, oh, I want to I want to no, know. Let, let's go over here. You know, and I, I will kindly lead people to where they need to go. Oh, I want to take a picture under that willow tree. Well, that willow tree is like 300 yards away. I don't, uh, we, do you want me to get you or do you want me to get the tree? Because I, I'm not going to be able to do both. So, you know, I mean, I try to, I try to give people what they want. Um, and it's funny because sometimes they'll get their photo gallery and they'll be like, oh, what happened to the photos with us? Blah, blah. They just didn't come out right. I, you know, it's, you know, a lot of times it's funny. It's a, it's a crapshoot. You know, elements and and kids and and um, you know whether it's really sunny or it's really cloudy or you know taking pictures of you guys with your backs to the sun, you're all all a bald and it was shining off your heads and you know. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and I he and our heads are huge too. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, just have to. You got to sort of just play with the areas. You know, I I don't have my own personal studio. Um, that's one of my things I'm working towards next year is, is being able to rent studio space where I can control the elements a lot better. Um, but where I'm at, there's not a lot of um, area. People don't have space for studios. Um, but that's something that I'm hoping to do. I also have a portable studio where I have, you know, I have backdrop and things in lighting and whatever. So I can, I can bring that with me if, if that's necessary. Can I ask you a question? Can you um do a photo shoot for Derek's feet so he can be a foot model? <laughs> <laughs> we got the pretty feet. I got pretty feet. It, it's it's his feet so pretty. There's some some just like Norris said. There's some stuff I'm just not gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> some we stuff I'm not gonna do. With all of the technology, with I guess the iPhone and all these people who I guess people feel that they're photographers, we I, I, I'm sure we still need the photographer. And and explain to the people the, the difference between amateur photography and actually being under direction the direction of a professional photographer. They, you know, th these phones that they've come out with are they're fan they're fabulous. To be honest with you, you know, you buy a thousand dollar phone, you, you, some cameras aren't even that expensive. You know, right. you can so you know there are people that will use their phone and you know want to take all kinds of, of photos, but you don't you don't you don't have the interaction of the photographer with the with the client. Right. So there are things that I may see in my client that they're not going to see behind their iPhone. I did a I did a shoot on um, two Saturdays ago. People wanted to do Christmas cards and they wanted to do it outside the house. And the the mom said to me, you know, my husband's tried it with the iPhone and the iPad and they came out um, the iPhone and the tripod and they came out horrible. But don't tell him I said that. That's what happens. You know, right. it's. You, you can try and sometimes people do really well but you know if you spend a half an hour with me i'm going to give you 25 photos that you're not going to be able to choose your favorite five from right. because that's that's just you know people people aren't necessarily aware of their surroundings and things that are around them and things that also make the picture you know so it's 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 like when i go to a shoot i like to get there early i like to i like to peruse the area and see what types of trees are around. You know, now it's it's dead, but you know, in the spring and in the summer, see what type of trees are around. I don't want to get cars in the background. It's it's you know, it's it's everybody doesn't do the detail um that needs to be done when doing a photo shoot with your phone. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, you know, it may be easier to get around with your phone, but 
you know, you're, 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 you are limited to what you're going to be able to do on your phone. So right. Lisa, how, how can people find you? My website is www.lifeinmotionphoto.com. Um, they can call me at 646-528-7779. Um, I'm looking for grad graduates. My, my new thing is doing graduate portraits. So if you have a graduate that's graduating in 2021 and they're an athlete or they're a musician or they're a dancer, um, I will do portraits of them in their elements, um, dressed up in their basketball uniform, in their tennis uniform or whatever their, you know, forte is with the guitar, their violin and make it packages um, reasonable for parents to to purchase. You do headshots and stuff too Thank for you. people that are trying to get into modeling and everything as well? I do. I will do headshots and I will do, we call those fashion shoots. And okay. um, those take a little more time, but it, it, it's definitely something that I do. And and standard headshots for your LinkedIn and your resume, um, those are quick and easy and um, easy to do. And shout out to anybody with some uh, possible studio space for next year. You know what I mean? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Lisa, we want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for thank blessing you us. Thank you for Thank you for photoshopping my beauty. You know what I'm saying? So thank you for everything. Sister. You're welcome. We thank you. you. Happy holidays to you guys. You too. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. All, All right. right. Take care. Enjoy Bye -bye. the holidays. Bye-bye. Right. girl, Lisa. Oh, Derek got so, a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're going to run to our next. This person been uh, giving us a lot of shine and, and, and sucking it to our pocket with our commercials. So, uh, Jamie, can you play our next commercial? Oh, I'm a right. new one. There I'm you a go, new baby. one, baby. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there you go, D. You know what I'm saying? Listen, listen, listen. Yeah. listen. Yeah. I'm shining on them, baby. I'm shining on them out there. There you the go, kid. There you, you know go. So our next guest is the creator and owner of Margot Priestley. Can we bring Masali Priest into the studio to produce a jamming? Masali. Hey, Masali. How you doing? Hey guys! Hi. How's How are you? What's up? Great, great, great. See, you I'm doing? matching you, D. I'm matching you today. Oh, okay. okay. We, out, we out here in these streets. We in these streets out here. We out here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? That's how we do it out in these streets. So, good, so Masali, what made you get into making head wraps and and now because of twenty because uh, of COVID nineteen, you make the the face mask? What made you get into that? Yes. So I actually started um, Margot Priestley in 2018. Um, we started with just turbans and that was it. Um, my mother and I actually have the business together and I've always been a lover of fashion and style and create, you know, being creative. And I wear a lot of like accessories and head wraps and scarves and hats. And I thought, wait a minute, I could make these. So we started making them. We started out just with a turban and it grew from there. So, and here we are two years later. Miss Sally, did your mom teach you how to sew? She That's did, what you learned? yes. All right, how long, how long, how long have you how long? to sew? I'm sorry, what was that, Rod? No, how long has your mom's been sewing and how long have you been sewing to? Okay, so mom's been sewing since like 1970 or something. I have no oh. idea. Forever. <laughs> Forever. Okay. Um, well, let me, I've been let... sewing for two years because she taught okay. me. So, yeah. And now, sometimes I'm better than her. I'll just say that. We'll say that. Okay, Don't good, tell her I good, told good. you. Don't tell her I told you. Sorry, mom. I'm hoping that she's not watching, Miss Sally, because then she heard you. She probably I got to... <laughs> I think this is, you know, this is a double standard when, when it comes to men and women. Guys can go out and run to the store quickly and things like that. But women, the hair is always a consideration. And back in the day, some people would set us back and go out there with like a shower. 
or cap or something um, like that and just you know make sure we couldn't get anywhere as a people but you have really helped us and so i just want to say i appreciate it but that that accessory it's not always just for dressing up sometimes it may be just some casual ones as well is that right absolutely so you know the collection we actually have out right now is called called our excuse me our cozy collection because we're at home a lot you know we're on our zooms we're running to the grocery store you know we're running wherever we need to go and sometimes we don't feel like getting all doctored up so yeah you can just throw on a turban you can throw on what i have on right now which is called one of our stretchies um which is kind of like a headband and you can just go so they're very versatile um wear them all year round all times throughout the day we have customers who sleep in them so it truly is a all day and all night affair with margot Priestley. beautiful Nice, beautiful. nice looking nice, stuff. Nice. Yours looks great on you, and I Thank think you. it's because it looks great. You look great. I'm seeing one on my screen that looks great itself <laughs> with the model. You're gonna have to re <laughs> you're gonna have to reassess that. Yeah, I think I think you should I think you should try one on Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed he got the and I noticed he had a, a nice mask there too. You know what I mean? You got the, looks like you're doing some accessorizing with the mask as well. You know. Yeah, and we started Talk about out, yeah a little bit of background about the mask so one of the things we started you know in april um we started making masks to kind of support with covid and initially every dollar that went to a mask um or excuse me every dollar from a mask sold went to kind of a fund to provide fresh fruits and vegetables for um a, a family that was in need so it really is kind oh, of like right. a labor of love for us um, and of course, you know, our wonderful customers, they always want things that match and coordinate and go together. So it was mm -hmm. a natural progression to make a mask that actually, you know, matches our um, head wraps or our turbans. Um, in addition to that, too, for those who don't wear, let's say they don't like things on their head, we also now have earrings. These are nice, nice things. Nice. So we have nice. earrings, we have headbands, we have pins and brooches so we have a full assortment um that can really you know add a little something a little pizzazz to your outfit well let me, let me ask you this a lot of people the hard thing about this is the fun part what about the business part is the business part a challenge just trying to deal with i don't want to say it but the natives Native. and also just trying to just deal with the general public is always a, a challenge so how's that been for you you know, I have to say our customers are, I, I like to call them kind of like our family members and our Margot Priestley, you know, people, they've actually been really amazing and supportive. And, you know, every now and then we get a little something that may be a little off, but for the most part, I mean, I really have to say our customers are everything. Um, everything we do is for them and they give us so much love and support. You know, um, the business aspect is, you know, being an entrepreneur, business owner is definitely every day is different. Right. So, you know, and most people know this out there. One day you may get, you know, you may sell $50. The next day you may sell $1,000. The next day you may not sell anything. So, you know, just riding those waves. But for the most part, you know, our support team has been truly wonderful and we truly think that, like, you know, Margot Priestley is well received out there. So I'm just incredibly blessed and grateful. Okay. This last one for me. Last one for me. Really, really okay. quickly. Well, last one. Give me one celebrity you'd like to see wearing it. Just one. If you could pick just one. Okay. So, Kelvin, I may actually, I watch this show, so I may have to steal her from you. Uh -oh. I don't know. She may she like go. me more than she may like you. <laughs> I'd love to That's see right. it. And I That's believe right. it's going to happen. You and I have to coordinate. We got to work that out because I want to be okay. one to give it to her. But we, we, we. <laughs> <laughs> but Sally, I, I want to pay That's you right. a compliment as a businesswoman because, you know, during this COVID thing, a lot of businesses have not been able to adjust. You've been able to create new items that still kept your business running, the mask and stuff like that. You, you've been able to articulate to your clients that, listen, this is on the get up and go, even if you're just going out to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. And I respect that mindset as a woman, as a businesswoman. I, I like that. Keep keep doing your thing, girl. Thank you. Thank you. And she got great pa her packaging is off the hook. <laughs> her packaging is off the hook. Yeah. Her packaging and is off thing, the hook. Can I say one thing quickly about the mask as well? Um, 
one thing that's really important to look at, just note out there with your mask, if you can blow out a candle or a flame or something through your mask, it is not working for you. Our masks are three layers. They have a non-porous, non-woven filter. Um, they're very comfortable. They have toggles. They're adjustable. So, you know, we, we, we love what we do, but we also ensure that we put out a really great product, um, really great, you know, quality, um, because it, there are things I wear and that I love, and this is, you know, a labor of love. And one thing to point out as well is, you know, we mentioned, you know, that we sew all of our headpieces, they're all made by hand. All these pearls, the pearls that you see the T has on, um, I, I literally make, do them, put them on one by one. So you know that you're just getting a quality product made with love from Margot Priestley. Awesome. That's right. Thank you. Masali, how can people find you, Masali? Yes. So we on Instagram um, and our website, that's at, you know, IG Margot Priestley. That's M-A-R-G-E-A-U-X Priestley. Um, and the one thing that we've done, because we just love your show so much, we're giving everyone that comes from this show and places an order 10% off on your first order by using the code CHOP IT UP. Wow. What's going on? This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is an oh, excellent businesswoman, a good business mind. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Thank Look, Masala, all we all love you, sister. Yes. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you for coming thank on. You. Yeah. Appreciate it. Continue success. Guys. Keep up the great work. You have an awesome show. Thank you, thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. The solid is dope. Yo, listen, yeah, man. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad a product can't make me grow hair yet. Her product can't make me grow hair. But, um, <laughs> listen, right, so now we have quick, some people. Quick idea. Quick idea. I'm get a picture of Masali's head wrap. Have Derek's wife put it on a cake, and then the photographer going to shoot it. And that's what we're going to do. We got to wow. and, and and we got to figure we got we got to do Tia's product in it somehow. And Tia, yeah, yeah. yeah. So with the with the shade butter, well, I'll be wearing that when I go and uh, orchestrate all this. So that's how we're gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so it's, it's really good to see. It's good to good to see the sisters doing their thing in the business yeah, world. Absolutely. You know, no, starting up business, it. amazing, that's, amazing. One, I like to see things like that. The number one entrepreneur in in the country is is, is black women. So yep. that's, yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's what right. you said right there. But um, I'm. This time we're gonna change up a little bit because you know our brother Derek has a son in the military, and Kelvin and I both work with a lot of young people over the years. And Rodney, you probably have interactions with a lot of young people. And I know over the years when we were growing up younger that you know they're saying the, uh, no place for the uh, a black man, uh, white man's army is no place for a black man. I have changed my thoughts over the years because of the young people I dealt with and trying to get their, their careers together and stuff like that. So our next guest is a former Air Force sergeant and Air Force recruiter. Sammy Jamie, can we bring in our brother Tim? Now we hope hey, Tim. Tim. Oh, what's going Tim on, what's going on, brother? Oh, Tim. Right. Oh, no technical issues, Tim. All right, we win it here. Even I even took off my glasses because my reflection was showing in the glasses. So there's <laughs> no, no right nothing at the bottom. Hey, hey, hey listen, Tim. We, we know you're trying to get your sexy back with the, the no glass look and everything, man. So we, we understand, brother. <laughs> Midlife crisis. <laughs> now listen, listen. Me and Tim, I'm mean, gonna lie. Me and Tim, we grew up in our manhood together. We've known each other since we turned turned to adulthood. So this is my true, true brother. I love him to death. So this is my man. He 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 went to the military when we were very young, and um, he had an outstanding career with that and retired. And you see like how his house looks. So you know he got his own money. So the military has <laughs> been very good to my brother Tim. So Tim hey. And when we right. say he's got his own money, no money, he he's got got his his own own money. money. <laughs> <laughs> so Tim, what, what what made you what made you get into the military? First of all, let's start with that. Let's go. Well, back. you know, um, well, one thing I, I'll tell you, you know, we went to we went to college together is how we met, and so I remember in processing, and you remember how long the lines were the HBCUs and stuff like that, and so my mother, I was on the phone with her one day, and she was like, um. Did you talk to the ROTC? Because I'm from Brooklyn. I don't. We don't have a bunch of money and stuff like that to be <laughs> messing around with school. But so the military was always kind of in my in the back of my mind. And so, um, you know, my college years were good, but um, I, I kind of needed a change. Um, I lacked discipline in a sense. Um, I started losing discipline, and um, 
I had to cut the bleeding on the student loans and stuff like that, man. So I, you know, went to go see a recruiter, man. And um, uh, that was that was pretty much it. You know, I called some of my friends. I remember clearly I called you and it was like this long pregnant pause on the phone. But I was like, you know, um, I got to do something. So um, to basically reset, you know, do the reset thing. So it worked out. And I was and listen, I was one of his causes of distractions because we drink a lot of Mad Dog 2020, 40 ounces of liquor. And uh Tim didn't smoke weed then, so it was a no. Walmart. <laughs> Thank goodness. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have joined. Long, it's no and long this, time this ago. A long, 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 time long, ago. long time ago. Long time ago. Long time ago. Long time ago. Let me let me ask you this question, Tim. First of all, it's an honor to speak to you. I'm the son of a former Vietnam, Air Force Vietnam veteran. And my nephew recently went into Lackland Air Force Base um, about a year and a half ago. So he's stationed in New Mexico now. I mean, one of the questions that we we were considering early on was should a person go in? I believe it's the term enlisted, whether you get your degree or not, or you go in as an officer. Could you explain that a little bit? Um, some of the pros and cons each way. Well, the um, so basically what happens is the enlisted folks, just real quick, the enlisted folks don't have degrees. Officers do. But. You know, the one thing, and, and here goes my cheerleader thing, I guess my recruiter had coming back on. Um, the Air Force is the only branch of service with its own accredited community college. So when you join, um, your job is actually kind of works as kind of like your degree plan. So we send you to school for different things. So you can build a degree from there. The good thing also about any branch of service is that we do a good job of hiring from within um, or advancing from within. So because you come in enlisted doesn't mean that you can't go to officer out. Um, a lot of times that's when you get a lot of good rec letters of recommendation and that kind of stuff like that. So a lot of people, you know, college is a network, obviously, uh, but the military is as well. I mean, obviously, you know, you have a commander or whomever your supervisor is, they can write letters of recommendation for you and those kinds of things. So um, there's a lot of different ways you can go. Um, you know, uh, I held several jobs in the, in the military, um, but um, the officer thing, I, I definitely missed the boat on that. I, I should have gone that route, but um, you know, it, my first supervisor encouraged me because he knew I had a lot of college credits and stuff like that. Cause you can go to school part-time while you're in the military, which is what right. I did. But, um, it, there's nothing to stop you from trying for sure. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. My, my son, uh, is graduating boot camp for the Navy. Okay. Uh, just, just graduated this week, you know, and, um, what really pushed me, well, I should say pushed him in that direction, you know, he, just, you know, the economy and a few other things going on right now, you know, sure, um, sure. you know, so I, I, I really, I really, it, it was really, it was really good for him just to kind of move into that, move into that uh, direction and just kind of start, start his manhood and start his adult years and everything. Um, and I'm a big advocate right now of young brothers and sisters. We, we talked about this before, um, you know, the military is no place for a black man, but I actually think that right now, it's probably one of the best ways for you to um, secure your future right now. Just speak on a little bit what it's done for you in terms of, you know, securing your future when you were from time that you were a young man and to where you are right now. You know, um, it, it's funny because I, when during my retirement ceremony, man, I got misty eyed just a little bit because, you know, coming from Brooklyn and stuff like that, you know, we all know, you know, Brooklyn and how, how hard it is coming up and stuff like that. And for me, um, I almost, you know, lost my life just walking to the store one day um, during Halloween. Y'all know how Halloween is in New York City, man. Um, so I thought about all of that and how far I came. So um, I didn't have my first car till I was 27 in the military because being in New York, you don't necessarily really need a car too much. And I was but a chauffeur I, in college. I was a chauffeur. Yes, he was my chauffeur in college <laughs> in South Carolina. I had no vehicle. So, you know, so there was that. But, um, I, you know, um, I... I I wound up, um, I wound up uh, doing pretty well for myself. You know, um, for me, you know, I one of the things also was to make my parents proud of me. Um, so, and I did that. And during my time, so basically, I worked a plan where you know I came out of it. Like I said, the community college thing. So I finished with two ba two associate's degrees, a bachelor's degree, and a master's degree. By the time I was done. Nice. Um, I, like I said, I, I, I was, my job in the Air Force was financial analysis and that kind of thing. And then I learned a lot of different things along the way in terms of, you know, um, you know, decision support classes, uh, uh, different, you know, um, 
different writing styles, um, reporting, supervising, that kind of thing like that as well. So you build a lot of different skill sets and stuff like that, project management. Um, I learned a lot of those things while I was in the military. So I, I tell people all the time, you know, um, and I put in a lot of I put in a lot of brothers and sisters, man, while I was while I was recruiting. And, um, you know, I tell them all the time to, to make, make sure that you have a plan because it's easy. Um, it's a good hustle for somebody. I'd say it's a good hustle for somebody that's 18 coming in, because where else? There's not too many places where you're going to get two and a half days of vacation a month. Um, you're looking at about 13, 14, 1500 dollars in, in this monthly salary. Um, so he doesn't have to ask you for nothing anymore. So if he calls you, ask you for something, it's over. <laughs> um, you know, and, and full medical, full medical, and you know, four hundred thousand dollars insurance, um, and and a four hundred one, something similar to a four hundred one k as well. So somebody coming in at eighteen years old or whatever, seventeen, um, you know, has a great that that's a pretty good start. Now that being said, um, the military does ask a lot of you. Um, there's no overtime. Um, you know, when you think you're getting off at 4.30, something's going on, um, you know, you just probably not going home till 6, 7.30. Um, there's deployments and those kinds of things like that, especially when you have families and those kinds of things. So, you know, the benefits and stuff like that are very good, but at the same time, you know, you have to, there's the other side, the work side or whatever, the actual military operational side. And then in the middle, like I said, is, is where you find your sweet spot in terms of still working your plan. Yeah. And so for me, like with me, with working with a lot of young people, a lot of like so-called at-risk young people, I always try to tell them, like, y'all at-risk right here banging out for these streets that don't belong to y'all, right? Um, getting no money with your crew. If you go, And to me, I'd rather for them now, I used to have, have a different mindset before, I'd rather them see going into the military where they get structure. A lot of young people yeah. are missing structure. And that's yeah. why I think I think the military, instead of joining a gang that's, that has a alleged structure, but it really doesn't have a structure to it, I'd rather see them go into the military and, and, and follow like the path like you did before. Even though, like you said, the deployments. I know, Tim, you served in Afghanistan. I remember they put you in witness protection, damn, they put you in Wyoming, somewhere like that. <laughs> it was horrible. You know, you, but, yeah. you saw, but you saw the world. You've been to Turkey. You said one of the places you always would want to move to, if you could, is back to Turkey. Like, I tell these young people, please, that's the main thing you said, was having a plan. And they don't have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. So, you know. Well, well you know, the one thing <laughs> is, you know, I had a supervisor, um, you know, when I first came in and and I did this to the people that I supervised as well, was basically talk to him about, you know, things happening two, three, four years down the road. Because the one thing I did learn is that those first four years run fast. Um, mm -hmm. I was at three stations in four years and I was like, oh, shit, what, you know, am I going to reenlist or what am I doing? And um, one of the things they also try to get you to do is even when you contemplate and getting out, they tell you, you know, well, what's your plan? What are you going to do? They do try to talk to you about what your plans are if you decided you had enough. Um, do you have your degree? Do you have any money? That kind of stuff. Because um, I, I worked in I worked in the, the finance office. And so we used to, inevitably we would get people who were out not even a month. They didn't save a dime. And they're wondering when that last paycheck that we owe them is coming. That's one paycheck. Um, so, you know, as far as, as far as, um, you know, um, uh, it, it's a great place to network and that kind of stuff and, and learn from other people, learn about, yeah, learn about structure and things like that. Um, you know, I, I tell people all the time, you know, the city is always going to be there. Um, you know, it's, the city is not going nowhere. We got, we got the greatest city in the world. I tell anybody that, but, you know, it's like when I, like when I left, um, you know, 20 years, I was always in contact with DeMont and Sam and everybody else. Um, I, I think I even met you, Rod, one time. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, the point is, is that, you know, um, in all that time, I never lost any of my friends. Um, you know, we've always been in contact and those kinds of things. So it's a matter of you going out and growing and, and y'all will catch up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Tim, I want to ask you this. I noticed when I used to work in the schools, when I when I was working for the police department, I talked to a lot of the kids about the military. There is a ton of misinformation that they have like they have a lot of misconceptions about the military i've even heard some young people say well once i join i can't get out you know what i mean i've, I've heard that so then when you're dealing with a youth like that that really has no you know nothing going on basically he's getting ready to head into the streets like how how do you approach him and talk to him about 
and dispel some of those misconceptions that he has. Well, you know, one of the reasons why I got into recruiting is because DeMond was doing, uh, you know, his work with the youth and that kind of thing. And so mm-hmm. my thing was, how do I do the same thing and still stay in the military? Yeah. So um, that was my opportunity to go into the schools and that kind of stuff and clear up misconceptions. Plus the fact that I was, you know, a, a, a black man who could relate. I still listen to hip hop. And, yeah. and those kinds of things. So I tried to, you know, stay in tune. So a lot of times when the parents came in, especially when they saw me, you know, um, you know, it was a little bit easier for me to relate to them and that kind of stuff to clear up a lot of misconceptions. So, I mean, and the misconceptions start from basic training. You know, it's things like, you know, nobody can hit you in basic training. The worst thing they can talk do is, you know, talk about you, you know, it's, no different than what your friends may have talked to you, you know, that kind of thing. And yeah, you can do your four years and get out if you decided you had enough. Um, and there's other ways you can get out early. Um, so there's a lot of misconceptions along those lines um, that they don't take care of you or, um, you know, uh, they treat you how they wanted to treat, how they want to treat you and those kinds of things. And I, I didn't run into any of those kinds of situations or anything like that. Um, you know, um, and if I did, there's this, you know, just like there's EO and that kind of thing in, in the civilian world, it's kind of the same thing in the military as well. So, you know, there's different um, there's different measures you can take to, to, to mitigate some of that kind of thing. But the, yeah, the, 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 the misconceptions are, are far too many. I mean, even a lot of guys used to come in and ask me, you know, are there girls in the military? And I used to have a picture, I used to have a picture uh, thing on my wall and with all these females that I put in, because my first year of recruiting, I put in more, more females than I did males. And so, you know, it, it's it's the it runs the full gamut, man, of, of, of a bunch of things. And you know, did you, did you kill anybody? It's just some of anything. Some of anything. <laughs> hey, Tim, Tim yeah. we, got, we got we got a question here. We said um, from Felicia. She said, yeah. "I would love to know if there any men or any mentors. My eighteen year old needs a, needs guidance. I suggest the military, but sh- but he is against it. But I think he needs needs it. A lot of misconceptions. So the, I mean, I don't know, Felicia. If you located in New York." I can tell you about some of the mentoring programs my organization, Good Shepherd Services, has and stuff like that. And um, you want to email me, it's demond, D-E-M-O-N-D, Pearson at gmail.com, and then I'll go walk you through that if you're in New York. I don't know where you locate it, but. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, I mean, the recruiters and stuff like that, you know, a lot of people, you know, kind of offset by some of the recruiters because they feel like they're going to get lied to and that kind of thing. Um, but the one thing I tell people, my comeback to that is, if I lie to you, then you're going to go and tell everybody else in the community about me. And I'll never be able to put anybody in. Right. So um, I so, you know, I, I, you know, so it would behoove a recruiter to tell the truth. But um, before I joined, not only did I talk to recruiters, I talked to people who've been in. So I said all that to say that, you know, um, I still answer questions and those kinds of things or, or kind of, you know, clear up misconceptions and stuff like that from people. So um, it's something that I that I still do. Um, yeah, you know, and Tim, I got, and I call Tim every time a young person, no matter what branch it is. I always contact Tim. So Felicia, if you want to contact me, um, let me know. And Tim, I could get you and Tim on the phone. Tim has done this a thousand one times for me over the over, over my career. So he's a good Absolutely. brother to talk to about it. So and and, and, yeah. and, w- and one more thing, um, you know, I, I wanted to to say is um, I, I met, you know, I had the pleasure of meeting somebody, one of my mentors when I first joined. Um, we're still friends to this day. Um, he had worked in, in in equal opportunity, and back when I first joined, it was social actions. And when he joined at the time in the '70s, it was called the race office. And you know, just to show you how far the military has come, when he joined in the '70s, there was not even so much as a jet magazine in the bit on base. You couldn't find a jet magazine in the stores on base. Um, and so, you know, the different programs and stuff like that, you know, they have Black History Month programs, um, Latin History um, Month, um, the different, et- you know, et- ethnicities and stuff like that. You know, they do honor and recognize the different re- ethnicities. There's like, you know, right now there's a big, huge push for women in a lot of leadership roles and stuff like that. Um, those things are happening. Minorities in leadership roles, those are definitely happening. Um, so, um, those things are, are, are definitely there. And like I said, there's no short of mentors and mentorship and that kind of stuff, you know, um, when you join. So, yeah. Oh, cool. So well, Tim, um, I got, one, I got, right, right. I got one more question. Um, what would you recommend to a person that does the four years and done and they decide they're going to come home? Like what's, <laughs> you know, what would you recommend to a guy like that? You know, a lot of times I was a four and done person and so uh-huh. 
16 years later, I still stayed and, and retired. So a lot of people do more than four years because they realize that it's that it's not as bad as what they thought on day one. Mm -hmm. um, but for somebody that, that does their four years and they get out, um, I would definitely, first of all, I would highly recommend that you, you, you line up everything in terms of your education. So, you know, you have your GI Bill. At that point, you will have earned your full GI Bill and that kind of thing. But And you can also go to class during that time. Um, at least get your associate's degree because um, now you can go to college, you know, on the government with the GI Bill and that kind of thing if you so choose. Um, you know, and then, you know, any injuries and those kinds of things that you sustained, um, you know, the, the Veterans Administration will take care of you that way as well. But the main thing just overall is just have a plan and, mm -hmm. and, and don't, um, you know, make your four years worth it. If that's what you know that you want to do, make your four years worth it. So whatever skills you can develop during that time. Um, try to make sure that you do that because we do send you to management school and those kinds of things. We don't just tell you here, supervise. You know, we, we make you, you know, we, we, we do, we do a lot of things in terms of, you know, um, helping build skill sets and those kinds of things. So take advantage of those opportunities. And, and, and um, again, the education thing is, is huge. Sam, Except wanna, money. Sam, last question. Oh, go ahead there. I mean, go ahead, Kelvin. Go ahead. Then no, very, very quickly. I understand that there's some young people that were not able to get into the military having tattoos in certain places. Or one of my friends was a recruiter in the Army. He said, we hated recruiting in New York. He said everybody had a felony or something like that. So is there something you can say to young people about just trying to keep their record clean, not getting tattoos on your face or whatever the case is when you want to try to go and then leave this option open? A lot of, well, a lot of gang, a lot of, excuse me, Tim, a lot of gang tattoos, too. Yeah, once you once you get those kinds of things, and there's some. I mean, if they're hidden within the sleeves, your short sleeves, and not on your neck or anything like that, then you know, um, you know, then you have you know that you can you know try to get in. But I tell people all the time. I mean, it's it's pretty simple for me. Um, my tattoo is my, is my scar, and I I got that from like I said, I was just walking down the street minding my business. Outside of that, um, look, I mean, our skin, man, is is, is so beautiful. Um, black people, mm -hmm. especially. <laughs> And so, you know, I, I just I, I don't see the, I don't see the re a reason for it and that kind of stuff. So the scarred up above the neck or anything like that, man, to me, it, you know, um, I wouldn't encourage it. Um, yeah. And then you limit yourself. So if you want to do, you know, something else, I mean, even if it's not the military, I mean, you know, you know, you're not necessarily going to walk into corporate America looking like that. Correct. So, it's with it's with any job that it's going to be an issue. Yeah, it's with any job. Yeah, it's right. yeah, exactly my point. So it's going to be with any job that's going to be an issue. So you know, why limit yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my last question, Tim, was was the twenty years in the in the military worth it for you? Um. <laughs> or what? And what do you recommend? Or what, what do you recommend if it's not twenty? If you could do it all over again. If you could do it all over again. If I could do it all over again, I, you know, it's funny. One day I was brushing my teeth in the mirror, and I had at that point I had. Uh, I was 37 years old, and I said if I had joined when I was 17, I'd be retired that day. Um, so um, probably joined earlier, but then I would have missed out on a lot of opportunities. I wouldn't have gone to an HBCU. I wouldn't. You, you would have never met me, friend. man. You know what I'm saying? I was, I, I, <laughs> see, I was saying that. So you know, and then it helped me. It helped actually make me relatable. You know, later on, like I said, with recruiting and everything like that, because I had been there and done a lot of things. Um, so I would definitely do it again. Um, I would start off at 23 like I did, and um, there's, there's very few things that I would change. Um, the, the, you know, I was it, when I joined, it was either go with with D and Sam to go on a video shoot or join the military. At that point, that was that was my out, and so I'm glad that's the one trip I'm glad I didn't make with my brothers, and um, it, it you know it paid off for me in the long run. So yes, I would do it again. Um, I would do everything again. Um, even the deployment, because I, I learned a lot on my deployment as well. So, I would but if you'd have went to Daytona Black College Weekend that time, <laughs> you'd have never been in the military with me. Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> we we had some we got some stories to tell, but we don't do that. Oh, we don't do that. No, that's that's a whole yeah. other story. Long, long long time ago stories. Long time ago. And, long time ago. And I'm gonna tell that story when when, San, when our producer Jamie's wearing those Daisy Dukes. I'm gonna tell oh. that story. Of it. But that's another story. That's another story. <laughs> so brother, brother Tim, thank you so much for coming on, man. Educating thank the people, you. man. Educating young people, man. True, appreciate it. And to know, um, anybody want to get in touch with Tim? 
you can uh tim how can i get in touch with you if they want to come through me tell them how can they reach out to you because people have a thousand um, questions for the young people uh i have i have an instagram that i don't use very much i think it's at the kingsman 72 um do you can verify that ah, man, um, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'll just take the easy route yeah if you have any questions um just shoot them to demand or, or any of the brothers and and, and um I'll, I'll i'll be be more than happy to answer them um derek to your son salute um and Calvin, i think you appreciate it to your dad as well um they paved thank the way you. and um you know um i stand on the shoulders of giants so um you know um it's just it was just my turn that's all that's what's up, man. Thank Appreciate you, you brother. You, Tim, I love, thank you. love you, brother. I can't love wait to hang out and see you, man. Appreciate we travel. Right. Sure, man. Right. Y'all right. Peace. This is a All great right. show, man. Y'all keep it up, for real. Thank, thank you, brother. Thank Appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Peace. Who oh, I got a promotion? A mom, man. <laughs> 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 I got a promotion. Oh, oh man. man. That, that, was, that was real good, man. I mean, we had yeah. a good show tonight, man. I mean, we learned a lot. We learned about we, uh, products helping each other out and uh, supporting one another. We saw a whole bunch of beautiful sisters tonight really showing us what they do or great stuff. Like we said, we're going to try to do that every single month, once a month. I forgot. I think, I think producer Jamie said a third Saturday of every month. I'm not sure. I can't remember on that. Yeah, he said, on he said once a month. And there's, yeah, a, there's he, an email. There's an email that they can send the contacts if they want to come on the show and show their products. Yeah, well, you know, producer Jamie, he don't pay me enough to um, remember the dates on certain things. So you know, <laughs> my let first me say this to you guys. <laughs> let me say this. I, I, I really mean this sincerely. First of all, to work with you guys. I know we're getting down to the holidays in the end of the year. I want to say this. Um, when I was auditioning for the show, um, <laughs> there was a big thing. They was like, they were like, they told my Rodney and Derek and Demond they're not going to want to work with a dude that's a sex symbol. And y'all still <laughs> proved them wrong. And y'all decided to accept me anyway. So I appreciate that, brothers. <laughs> I just want to say that. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank the Rodney, we just lost Rodney. I don't yeah, know why. He, he, he can't even listen to it no more. He, <laughs> well, he already well, knew well, where well, well, this was going. Now, uh, one is bad. One, it must be, he must be schooling one of them badass kids he got over there, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all got but, it. But no, but nah, this is a good show, man. Thanks to Brother Tim for educating the man for the, for the young people who got a daughter or a son out there that's trying to figure out the way and they're like 17, 18, maybe even 20, 24 years old. I think you were getting the military to 34, 35, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, 35 was, was it, it, it varies per branch. It varies per yeah, branch. So, so some yeah, of you, yeah, yeah, so yeah. some of you fuck boys that can't figure it out, you need to join the military. Bring your ass on. <laughs> oh, and let me say something. Come on. We got to we gotta really handle this. The, I just got an alert. Batman is at Rodney's door and he wants that smoke. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened to Rodney, but brothers, for the rest of the brothers are still on the screen. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Hey, y'all. Love y'all, brother. Man. Hey, he come back, man. Yeah, now, he, now he comes back. Hey, he didn't want to. He didn't want you to hear that. Did not tell you. <laughs> Rod is muted. You muted. You muted. <laughs> Yo, I had to go check. So I had to go straighten something out. No, all jokes aside, I, I keep it a hundred because of this new diet. I'm drinking all this water. I had to go to the bathroom. Right. Right. I had to piss. Right. I couldn't take it. We thought Batman came to see you, brother. Nah, <laughs> yo, I, I will whip. I will whip Batman's ass. <laughs> yo, brothers, I love y'all, man. Peace, man. See y'all next week, man. All right, take care. Love y'all. Sorry about that, audience. <laughs>